Good morning. Sound check. Yep. Hello, hello. What's up? Hey. Hello, everybody. All right, is that everybody? I think so. All right. So last week, you guys successfully saved the city of Tribor from a fire giant attack. Uh, you only got one uh, NPC killed. Well done. Uh, you got some quests to go on. Uh, you made a cart. And then you were, we left off at 10 in the morning as you headed east across the Savage Frontier. Uh, was there anyone who had business they want to take care of before we set out? Anyone? anyone? Not I. Nope. No. All right. Let's see here. How far is it to the next town? So, did we decide where we where were we where we were going next? Uh, let me go look at the map. But yes, we did. Um, I suggested going to the Delphel Bar. They don't know where we actually decided to go. I I think three of our destinations were like all to the east. And we're going to, like, go to them in proximity order, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Well, your next town <clears throat> is about 50 miles away. It's the town of Yartar, uh, the city of Yartar, uh, across the Evermore Way. Uh, as you head out, so about two days travel, 50, 50 miles, by care, by horse and buggy um, as you head out just real quick I'm going to read you a little bit of flavor text that I quite like out of the book and then we'll uh, go into the adventure the savage frontier is a harsh untamed wilderness dotted with fortified settlements and the lairs of terrible monsters in hundreds of blood curdling tales of danger and hardship the North is portrayed as a vast, cold, and lawless domain that defies all attempts to civilize it. Grim dwarf holds, tribes of fierce barbarians, and half-legendary elf lands might stand for a short time, but none are destined to last. An orc horde or a flight of dragons could sweep them by uh, tomorrow, leaving nothing but a mile upon unmapped mile of wilderness. Uh, you, are, however, are on a road. Uh, well, well... Uh, well patrolled here in the uh, quote unquote civilized Desterran Valley. <clears throat> so, what I would like for someone to do, whoever's first on the uh, Matt Verbar. Yes. Would be so kind as to give me a D100. Ninety-two. Ninety-two. All right. Okay. Uh, as you leave, uh, you see that first day, uh, you see about 20 or so uh, people kind of huddling on the side of the road. Um, some of them have seem to have belongings that are carrying along. Some seem to have uh, nothing on their backs. A few of them are heading towards Tribor. Many more are heading away from it. They look, they like, look like refugees. refugees. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the exact same thought. I didn't. Go I couldn't ahead. hear you guys. Were you, you were talking over each other? I couldn't hear you. Okay. Well, we said the exact same thing, but do they look like refugees? Uh kind of. Yeah. They. I mean, they're. They don't look like they've been on the road that long, but they do look like they're uh, kind of lost. Oh. Uh, Unsettled at first glance as you ride, as you keep riding past them. Okay, so if nobody has any objections, uh, I'm going to ride up to them and offer them our services as 
caravan guards. Are they in a caravan or are they just walking? Uh, you, you pass a couple of families uh, going by. As you pass by, um, they the, they have a consistent refrain if you're going to engage them in conversation. Uh, most of them don't really know where they're going. Uh, apparently, the giants that attacked the city uh, were also kind of rampaging across the countryside. That's why some of the guards weren't in the city when during the attack. Uh, they were out investigating, you know, the burning. Um, so there's a few, there's looks like uh, three or four families and, you know, they're assorted farm workers and whatnot who are currently out and about. A few of them, like I said, you, one of the families is heading back in the direction of Tribor. Uh, the rest of them just seem kind of listless. Uh, a few seem to be heading east across the road, but a few just kind of seem to be trying to get their wits to, back together. Well, Ryle is going to be in the back of the cart slash wagon working on something. So I don't really have an input on what we're going to be doing with these guys. Okay, I mean, if they don't know where they're going, I'm fine leaving them too. But I was just thinking if one of them was going to the city we were going to, we could make some extra money. Uh, looking at them, you don't suspect they have much money on them. Most of them have just the clothes in the back, uh, okay. maybe a keepsake or two. Uh, if that's all, if nobody has any more questions, we will continue on. Um, you're able to get, <clears throat> like I said, about 25 miles, about halfway uh, from what you were told to Yartar. Um, able to rest up for the night. Let's see if anything happens here. Uh, let's see. Hunter, give me a, a D20. Sure. How are you in the night? Sixteen. Uh, you are uh, able to get through the night without any issue. Uh, was there anything anyone wished to do in the uh, evening? Yeah. Of the night? Yes. Um, I am going to take that chunk of adamantine we we or I managed to get off of that giant chunk, and I'm going to craft two sets of clockwork golems, which I'm going to post a picture of in Skype. I can figure out how to get here. I'm going to craft two of those and um, animate them. And get them to set up camp for us. They turn towards you guys. Um, these uh, uh, imitations of men uh, staring at you unblinkingly. I gotta, I gotta tell them that uh, while we were in the cart for the rest of the day, I've been working on something. Um, I managed to take some of that adamantine that we uh, we got off that chunk back in Trabor. And I fa and I was able to transmute them into two of these golem type bodies, and through a through basically what's essentially animate dead, I was able to make them work. So we got two little uh, um, little golem helpers. <laughs> what are they good for? Uh, these. Okay, game-wise, I'm just going to use the skeleton um, uh, stats. Let me post them real quick. But basically, it's anime dead. But instead of dead, they're golems. Has anyone read that green text story where it's the paladin and the necromancer in a party and the necromancer is pretending to be a cleric? No. Maybe. Uh, I'm, I actually am a cleric. Yeah, I know, but it just reminds me. Of I know, I don't, I'm just saying. <laughs> and the whole time, the paladin's trying to like 
be, is like suspicious of the necromancer. And the necromancer gets like summoned skeletons and like dresses them up in clothes and like has like a really high bluff skill so that he can like explain why they're not talking. I think I've read something like that. But I was planning on just taking some skeletons and making a suit of armor and can let me make it a whole lot less complicated. Yep. There's too much other shit going now. We don't need to complicate things. <laughs> All right. You're introduced to your uh, friendly neighborhood psychotic homes. And uh, we will go on the next day as you approach the town. Uh, again, you're heading toward, you're in a fairly civilized area, so on a, on a well traveled road. So besides with the occasional caravan, you don't pass anything. You get into Yardhar. Uh, just a little bit before dust. What sort of town is it? Uh, it's a fortified city. It's right. It's on the east bank of the river. Um, there is a citadel wall on the west side. You have to pass by uh, on the road. <clears throat> uh, between them, there's a a uh, wide bridge, wide enough for a couple of carts to go across at a time. Um, so the, uh, there is an inspection, but you guys don't have anything, any contraband on you, so you're just quickly able to pass through. Um, looks like it's mostly made of stone. Uh, it's a big building, and looking, the streets are pretty crowded, even in this late evening. Uh, do you get any more information about if anybody wants to give me a history roll? I will do so. You do a history roll. I, want to know what you know about the city. Let let me roll since that's really all I'm good for. <laughs> um, and I think I'm out of the game. Sweet. We still see you as here. I see you as in it. I see you too. Well, <clears throat> that's weird because the browser closed, but I'm coming back in. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> you guys might as well just roll. No, I think it'd be good. I think we should let you uh, let you roll. <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't roll too well. No, we didn't roll. We're waiting on you. You're our yeah. resident historian, so everyone's <clears throat> patiently waiting for your expertise. If I know anything about about it, it'll be from uh, you know bards, tales, and songs, not from any books. What it literally, it? I'm st I'm staring at the page; it still hasn't loaded my character sheet. Jesus Quick, Christ! Run through the house and grab the twenty. <laughs> no, I'm in a hotel. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. There, there you go. <laughs> you don't break it. <clears throat> oh, I lied. I lied. My my history is not very good. My intelligence is a zero, so it's only a one. Right, yeah. So we rolled an eight. Eight? Okay. Um, so Yartar is a port city. Um, it has... Uh, you know you know the leader is called the Water Baron. Uh, you don't know who it currently is. Um, it is a member of the Lord's Alliance. Uh, and there tends to, there's a uh, there's always rumor in any window that there's some sort of uh, thieves guild running around, but there's nothing uh, like concrete that you know about. Is there a, an inn or anything here in town? Yeah, there are several inns of varying you know levels of quality from terrible dives down by the docks to ritzy, fairly upper-class, uh, high-end merchant sort of place. There's uh, towns along the way, but I reckon we should get proper sleep while, while we're able before we we uh, get too far out into the, the wilderness. 
Oh, I'm with never passing up a good opportunity. I can look at the back of the cart and uh, notice we don't have any sort of betting back there. And I'm going to agree. I don't have much coin as of yet. Uh, I was expecting. It's okay. I have Captain Style. Huh. Okay. It basically means that, like, I get to spend like money frivolous, frivolously at inns and put it on my family's tab. Nice. I was, and I might be able to. I was I'm sorry. expecting we would have been paid by now, considering we set out to do a a gig in Night, Nightstone. We got a little sidetracked. We made money <laughs> from that. A little bit. Well, I, I do have a few scraps of animantine left, but not much. Yeah, we have to save that for a truly dire situation instead of just a bed and a meal. If we find the right inn, I might be able to pay our way by performing. Well, as long as we're in Waterdeep or the north, my name and signet is sufficient to cover expenses at inns, taverns, and festivals. Sucks. That must be nice. We're good on say it whatever inn you like. Let's find the nice, the second nicest one. Because as we learned in the last city, the nicest one are dick bags. Apparently. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have to round a bit. Uh, give me. Be a good role for trying to figure out what the best quality ends in town are. Be a good You're system. coming in and out, Ken. Sorry, I'm so using. Is the microphone here? That was really close to the microphone, yes. Okay, but that's okay. That is the microphone. All right. Well, that's inconvenient. Okay. I was hoping it was on the headset itself. Is that any better? Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, that's better. My old headphones no, started to have a new set. Is that, is that even better? That's yeah, there's yeah. less. Yeah, there's less background noise there too. All right. What uh? What stat was Streetwise based off of in three five and Pathfinder? Does anyone remember? Well, it's definitely an in. It. I'm just trying to figure out which in skill it should be. Um, I guess we could maybe do a pers uh, persuasion. Uh, probably let's do for that. Let's do survival. Give me a survival roll. It's an urban survival. I'm going to look over towards the ranger. The best Calders can do is a nine. Hey. Verbar, are you going to roll? Or Airfield? Oh. Airfield's going to trust in Verabra. Or, no, he's going to trust Ryle. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled an 18. Never been All here right. before in my life, but I know exactly where to go. Well, you don't know where to go, but you're, you, you are personable enough to go ask around and get some information. Um, ask some of the shops around. Them. You, know, you buy a pie in the street. Um, we'll tell you a name of a couple of nice inns. Uh, they also tell you you're looking for something really nice. Uh, there is a uh, you can go to Lord Dryland's uh, gambling ship. He owns uh, some uh, spend, splendid parties out there on the river at nights. Uh, gambling. Call. One second. Uh, the Grand Dame. Owned by Lord Dryland, D R Y L U N D. Is that something we just hear along the road, or is that something we pick up in the tavern where we go? Uh, it, when you're asking around for what you know, where the nice taverns are, uh, there somebody goes like, just to kind of not just be like, because you're asking for somewhere nice. And they give you a couple of nice taverns, a couple of nice inns. Like that's this is somewhere that's really nice. Okay, 
Um, I'd like to go there and speak with Lord Dryland. Okay. <clears throat> and subtly reveal that I am also in the Lord's Alliance, because I suspect he is, because he is a lord and the city is in the Lord's Alliance. Okay. Um, yeah, you're able to walk over. Um, let's see here. You're only, you walk up to, down to the river docks and you see what can only be the Grand Dame. It is a large, ornately decorated riverboat. It has a couple of uh, levels to it with a big wheel behind. Um, currently, it looks like um, there are about, it's about an hour or two before true sunset. Uh, so there's a fair number of commoners uh, heading on the dressed. Some are dressed like servants, some are dressed like chefs. Looks like people are getting ready to go to work. Uh, and there is a uh, woman uh, kind of supervising. Uh, actually, a woman and a man. Uh, the man is dressed kind of officially, although not splendidly. And then the woman is dressed in a uh, in a robe and has the air of like a bodyguard. Okay. Wait, so she's dressed like a bodyguard, or she has a bodyguard? She's dressed as though she's a... She, she, doesn't, she doesn't dress like a bodyguard. She's dressed kind of like in uh, more... In like an Asian-style robe, like, or garb. But she has the bearing of a bodyguard. Or of a, you know, captain of the guard, perhaps. Okay. Okay, now, are we talking like... Uh, I can't remember what those Asian-style dresses are. Is it one of those... Kimono? No, um, like those Chinese dresses. The ones I'm thinking of. Just the silk it's dress? Not, yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's not a tunic or a dress. It's, it's just, you know, the kind of silk dress. Like, it's, it's a... It looks like a robe, not a not a dress. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Oh, That's I what I was talking about. Now. Yeah. what my search history would look like if I started pawing keywords okay. into Google now. So I feel like the game is to figure out which one's in charge. Well, I mean, there's two people who are obviously in charge. The rest, everybody, yeah. all the com all the other else looks to be going to work. They're going to be like checking people into work. All right, if I'm able to look without looking like a, uh, looking like I'm staring at her, does she look like the, uh, does she look strong? Or does she just look like a woman? I mean, do what I'm trying to ask. Right. Uh, she looks like a. Uh, she looks like a woman. Uh, she carries herself in such a way that she's obviously on guard. Um, you know, and they make an insight check for that. She's constantly kind of looking around her, observing. Um, <clears throat> but uh, she doesn't. She doesn't seem as though she would be much in a fight, but you also, you know, you're, you're still fair ways away, and you're not sure what the, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're not sure what the, you know, what her stats would be, but she doesn't appear to be a fighter, but she does appear to be in charge and kind of, on um, and kind of observing everything around her. Okay, so I, I just rolled a one, so, or a natural one, so I probably can't get any more information. <laughs> But that's enough, so I'm going to go address her and introduce myself and give her my family name and introduce okay. the rest of the party as well. Okay. Uh, she'll bow to all of you uh, while keeping but keeping her eyes up watchfully. Uh, she'll introduce herself as Pao Ming. Uh, she is a... She, she says that she is a head of security and directs you to the man behind, next to her uh, who is a, a, the captain of the ship whose name is Storn. S T O R N. Okay. Um, I will introduce myself to Storm as well. Okay. Uh, he'll, he'll acknowledge you as he's checking people in and ask how he can help you. Kind of watch you warily as you 
approach all armored and armed. You got this, man. <laughs> um, I will say that I am seeking an audience with Lord Dryland. Okay. Uh, he'll tell you that Lord Dryland uh, will be on the ship uh, before these. Um, and he asks, he inquires who you are. I'll introduce myself and my family name and say that no, I'm not going to tell him much more than that, though. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, persuasion roll to see if he's impressed by your name. Okay. Also, before you roll that, um, have you taken the time to clean off you to clean yourself up from the road, or are you just going there and kind of dirty clothes and armor? <laughs> Does anyone know press digitation? <laughs> I do not. Building. Actually, I mean, I I, do, I, do I have it as well, but I hadn't done it. Clean, but I, I don't Could you do it now? <laughs> <laughs> I probably have some oil or something something on me because we didn't clean up. No, we definitely did not. Yeah. Okay. But if you then, you make it, then you make it a disadvantage. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 19. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, 19, he is 19. Uh, he is dutifully impressed by having someone from so august a family coming into uh, Yartar. Uh, he, his tone immediately kind of changes. Uh, he does invite you onto the ship. Uh, the, it is a, he tells you it is a, uh, they are going to have quite a fete tonight. Uh, with dancing and gambling and the whole like, um, they'll be the, they'll be setting off an hour after dark and re arriving back at the dock an hour before sunrise. Um, he gives you a wooden token uh, with a what well, looks like a uh, goose uh, painted gold engraved upon it, and says, "This is your uh, entry. Your this will allow you entry." Uh, to the ship, but please, uh, we do not allow weapons or armor on board uh, for the safety of all of our guests. Arafil will step forward and um, just tap his hand to his um, bandor and say, certainly you'll allow me to uh, bring my instrument aboard. Um, like, as a question. <laughs> certainly you'll allow me to bring my instrument aboard. Uh, he looks at you and says, are you offering your uh, services at a, uh, as a bard. Uh, he's, he says we have uh, all the, we have hired a bards uh, several <clears throat> bards or several groups already. Well, um, point me in the direction of your of your largest room if you want any of the um, of the, those not as fortunate to win money um, from your fine establishment. If you don't want them to become rowdy, I'm certain I can. Um, calm the masses better than any bard you've hired. Uh, he he kind of cocks an eyebrow at you and says, uh, "We do not need uh, to have the we do not allow the rowdy masses onto our ship. Only the highest, only the finest sorts are allowed <coughs> on the, upon the uh, Grand Dame. Uh, you're well, even the finest. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead." Um, I'll say, well, even the finest sorts um, will walk away with a smile, having handed over um, great fortune after hearing me play. Uh, he uh, will kind of cross his arms now uh, and says, uh, well, play something for me, and I will see if I will allow you to uh, perform upon my ship. All right. I'll... Um... <clears throat> I'll just give a nod over to um, Ryle. <laughs> yeah, for some gonna, guidance. I'm going to cough into my hand a little bit, and um, you're going to see a glow <laughs> around my hand, and I'm going to cast <clears throat> guidance on uh, <laughs> where I feel here. I'll just start um, just, you know, strumming and uh, picking at my um, uh, banjo for all intents and purposes um, as fast as I can, and playing some you know, some bars and some uh, crescendos. Where's my performance? 22. All right. Uh, he is really impressed and gives you a little golf clap. Some of the uh, more rustic folk, the cooks and whatnot, start hooting and hollering at you until 
uh, the captain shoots him a dirty look, and they all kind of shuffle up the game going to work. Uh, and he does invite you in, and he tells you that uh, you can uh, play. He can uh, find a spot for you in the bar uh, this evening, and you are welcome to take. Uh, you are welcome to whatever you can earn in tips. Ten uh, percent cut to the house. <clears throat> Not. I'll look a little disappointed, but not wanting to um, upset our, our host, I, I'll keep quiet. Okay, what what was it you... Maybe I misunderstood what you were trying to do. What are you... Uh, oh, no, 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 I just... I, I, I would like to get more for my services, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to um, try to persuade this guy any further. Uh, like, I see. I'm not going to okay. try to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, <clears throat> he, is, he is still looking... He, he definitely is looking down on you as a bard. He thinks you're a very good bard. But you are not a noble, so he's still not looking at you like he looks at. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else have anything to wish to do? Um, not with this well, gentleman. Yeah, yeah, not until totally here. Maybe. Okay. Well, I guess, like he says, you do have to, you have an hour or so to disabuse yourself of your weapons and armor, however you wish to do so. Or you will not be let on board. Oh, I guess I should have asked him. Uh, do they have a place to store our weapons and armor? Like, do they have a coat check, basically? I see. Uh, he shakes his head no. They do have a coat check, but not a pointy object check. Certainly understand, yeah. Well, we do have Mo and Larry to, to guard the cart while we're gone. I suppose we will return shortly. I would like to conceal a dagger, though, and bring it with me. <clears throat> All right. Well, give me a give me a uh, disguise check. What would that be? And, uh, a stealth check, I guess. A stealth check. Sorry. I, I have a disguise. twenty or a thirty with advantage. Sorry, what was the first number? Twenty. Okay. You shove that up somewhere. We're invisible. I have a proficiency with disguise kits, but I'm assuming that's... I've never used one. I'm assuming that's for actually making myself look like somebody else, not for obviously concealing any uh, any weapons or anything like that. It'll, it would be stealth, I assume. Uh, I bet you use disguise kit to try and hide it somewhere if you can if you can make it convincing. Like you're going to say, I'm going to disguise, I'm gonna disguise it as a hat. <laughs> I don't even think I have any weapons that I would need to. Like, if somebody else wanted me to try to do something, you know, with the disguise something as an instrument, I probably could do that. Or like a fancy cane. I don't see myself needing no weapon in this particular establishment, and I am fine with uh, leaving my stuff in the cart, guarded by our. I'll remind. You just have to bring an instrument, right? I'm sure if something happens, we can figure something out. Yeah, how many daggers can um, you fit in that guitar? <laughs> I want to bring my hammer, but... <laughs> I don't think I don't that's going to happen. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a... Uh, what is it? Um, it's a pick. A really big pick. <laughs> I will leave my stuff in the cart and return when the group is ready. Yeah, I'm gonna take my stuff off. Or I'm gonna take my stuff off too. I'm gonna change into my uh, cleric robe with a nice big uh, cog on the front and go to the party. Okay. That's the only extra set of clothes I have. I'm gonna actually dress up really fancy. I'll take one of my fancy outfits out and um, some. Some jewelry, some fancy like costume jewelry I might have, and um, doll up so I fit in better with these uh, nobles and lordly folk. I will dust myself off. I I will bring my uh, noble robes that I got for being a noble background. Knock on nice list, and also my deck of cards that I got for being. I'll a cast. Noble. I'll cast president at uh, predator. 
prejudice to ta- Jesus Christ. I'll cast it on all of us. <laughs> Yeah. Press the digitation. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, you are able to get yourselves gussied up. Uh, uh, Caldras is only as gussied as you can make him. He's kind of a dusty fellow overall. But you're able to get yourself dust, uh, all set, and you would get back to the dock uh, with plenty of time to get up there and get into the party. As you walk up, there are all sorts of finely dressed people uh, heading up. Looks like a couple hundred are making their way up into up into the ship. Uh, as you as you enter in, uh, there is a uh, there's a rowboat. Uh, I apologize that there's a wheel. There's not a wheel. There are actually oars, and there you saw rowers coming on the ship previously. Um, but you walk into the main deck. There is a walkway around with a room inside that you walk in there looks like a dining hall with a dancing area at one end uh there is a bar uh, you can see through a door uh in there as well i just a kitchen i'm sorry so uh Towards the front is the dining area, uh, spacious, uh, with plenty of fine settings around. Uh, you can also see, uh, as you walk around the uh, the outside, a gambling hall uh, set up, but already with uh, croupiers and wheels spinning. There's also an upper level, but you can't, you haven't gone up there yet. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Did you guys hear any of that, or was it too far yeah. away? Yeah, we, we heard you. We heard you. Okay, just making sure. Just trying to think what I'm going to do. Sorry, it took me a second to find the perfect song to play for these people who aren't so, going to like it. But <laughs> you said the bar wasn't a bar; it was a kitchen, right? Yes, I apologize. There's a there's, a, there's the dining hall. Uh, there's a bar at in the. There is a bar in the gamma hall but it's not a separate bar it's just a kitchen i was confused um there are about uh yeah there's about 30 total there's about 30 like really well-dressed people and then they each have you know companions on there's probably about 50 or 60 people total uh scattered around right. uh, i'd like to go mingle with the well-dressed people and see if I can learn anything about Lord Dryland. Did okay. is Mister is a uh, Storm still around? Did he tell me exactly where to play, or should I? I'm going to go ask him when and where he wants me to play. <clears throat> yeah, uh, he tells you that uh, to ask you to go play next to the bar, which is towards the back of the boat. Uh, there are stairs mm-hmm. going up with some guards next to it, uh, but there is the there's a a bar area. Uh, with you know people sitting at the bar having a few drinks, and he encourages you to uh, plow your, to play your rows. I'm gonna like walk past the guards, head held high, just tapping my guitar um, as I walk past them and try to get past them to go to the stage and start playing. All right. You know, Calders is just gonna find somewhere kind of nearby where uh, Arafail is setting up and I'm just gonna relax for a moment. I'm gonna grab a drink and uh wait around for a little bit. Okay. And who was that who was asking after Lord Dryland? Uh Verabar was. Verabar was. Alright. Uh you learned that Lord Dryland is a one of the wealthiest men in Yartar. Um he recently let's see here let me give you a clarification. Nope, 
Yeah, so Lord Dragon, uh, he is a wealthy man. Uh, he has owned this boat for several years. He always throws the best parties. So a couple every time, a couple times a week, people they go out in the river, uh, they spend all night gambling and drinking and you know gossiping among the noble among the nobility. Um, <clears throat> give me a uh, either persuasion or maybe a pers- persuasion roll to see how much uh, actual gossip you get. A what or persuasion roll? Uh, just a persuasion roll. Okay. I rolled a fifteen. Okay. Uh, a uh, a middle aged man who's already a couple looks like he's a couple drinks in already. Uh, will kind of pull you down close and uh, and he will tell you that he thinks that Lord Dryland is trying to take uh, he's trying to become Water Baron uh, that old Ruthiel, that's R-U-T-H-I-O-L uh, has a firm grip on the on the post uh, but uh, uh, but Dryland is uh, you know throwing money around and throwing more and more parties, trying to get more and more people on his side. Uh, he thinks he's trying to uh, kind of wrest control. Okay. And he, he thinks that and he thinks this is grand fun. Like his game is just politics, and politics are our game. Like he's not like this is terrible. He's like, oh, this is hilarious. He's kind of whispering, but he's not because he's drunk. <laughs> okay. You said Water Baron? Water Baron, yes. Yeah, it's at the high ranking noble of the town. Do you want me to roll a performance for playing? Yes. Um, and we'll just say that Raleigh gave me guidance before I walked on <laughs> again. Or not. Or if, or, well, sure, I can do that. If anything, come up here and clank your arm like a cow's bell. I'll cast Mage Hand and give you guidance. I don't think you can cast a spell through Mage Hand, but sure, fuck, it doesn't matter. That was terrible. 13. 12. 13. All right. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I didn't didn't roll my. uh, my guidance. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, you, you're playing for the first. Uh, we'll say you're going for the first hour or so. Um, it's a summer night. So it's gonna be about a probably about an eight hour trip down and up the river. Um, so for the first little bit, like assuming you don't do something else. Uh, let's. Uh, nobody is terribly impressed with you, but they're all. You know, you're providing entertainment. As you, if people walk by, they kind of toss the silver and gold. Uh, you'd get a total of 34 gold uh, there in that hour. Great. Again, if, these, these are the creme de la creme. So to them, that's just like pocket change. <laughs> um, so while I'm playing, I'm also going to scope out the crowd. And I'm going to look for like um, someone I can pretty much gold dig or get information out of. Like... Um, uh, I remind you that I'm stunningly good looking, um, being an Asmar, <laughs> and I'm gonna look for like a decrepit, um, like not decrepit old woman, but an older, an older uh, older woman who um, may not be accompanied. Um, He's looking for a male. Might be able to seduce. Yeah, pretty much. I don't really uh, care about her look. I care more about her status and, and wealth. But okay, what's the roll? Oh, what am I? Uh, insight? Perception. Perception. No perception. Uh, yep. Terrible. I, I, I heard a bloop, but I thought that was you. Um, I'll assume the guidance is still going. If not, <laughs> one roll of seven. Time. Yeah, it doesn't seven. work. A seven? <laughs> um, everyone around you seems pretty wealthy. You, you're kind of like a... You ever see a dog, like a Labrador, who gets thrown several balls at once? He doesn't know which one to chase? That's kind of what you're like right now. All right. <clears throat> mm. 
All right. Anybody else have anything we should do? Any conversations we should have? Uh, any gambling they wish to do? There are games of all sorts, uh, as you would expect. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, yeah, Verabra would like to give his wooden or show his wooden token. Uh, yeah, I'm going. Well, the wooden to... token. The wooden token just got you in the boat. Uh, uh, someone actually, and somebody actually did comp- confiscate that from you, and uh, not confiscate. It was you had to turn it in to get on. But that was your mark. Uh, I, th- I thought that was to get a new audience with the dude. Um, if you, so yeah, that, well, that, no, that's just to get you in the boat. But he will be. He, you were told he would be here. Okay. All right, I'm going to go off gambling too. Um, I'm going to probably look through the uh, the different um, the different games. Look for something simple like blackjack, or yeah. or whatever the Faerun version of blackjack is. We're just going to say blackjack. They have there's roulette, there's blackjack, there's uh, poker table, um, there's craps. Okay, um, I'm not. He doesn't know how to play many card games, so he's going to go for blackjack because it's simple. Okay, uh, give me. Uh, you can either roll games or sleight of hand uh, if you don't have game. If you're not proficient in games, I am not proficient in games. Okay, so go ahead and give me a sleight of hand roll, and we'll see if how good you do. Okay, um, I'm not these guidance on myself, and I rolled a sixteen. Okay. How much do you put down to begin with? Uh, first, I put down five gold. Five gold? All right. That's kind of the minimum bet of that table. Uh, let's see, you sit down with it. Blackjack doesn't pay out that great. Uh, let's say you just walk away with. It's not going to work like that. Uh, you walk away with nine extra gold, so now you have 14 gold to your name after playing for a bit. Okay, then. Um... I'm going after I won. Uh, I'm going to uh, play again, and this time I'm going to I'm going to bet the five gold and then all my winnings. Okay, so okay. fourteen gold. Uh-huh. Same uh, side of hand roll. <laughs> and I rolled a twelve. Oh, all right. Uh, again, you're playing blackjack, so blackjack's a very low, you know. You don't win fast, you don't lose fast. So, uh, you'll lose... Uh, you just lose one gold off that. How much? <laughs> one. You're down one. So you're down two. Oh, no. By the way, I am rolling, okay. by the way. I'm not just making up numbers. No, no, I was, I was just <laughs> trying to think, okay, so I do lose one gold, or do I lose... Okay. Yeah, you lose one gold. All right, so 13. All right. Um... Since I lost a little bit, I'm not as confident, but I'm going to try one more time. And I'm just going to bet all 13 I would just made. And I rolled a 10. All right. Uh, and you lose... Uh, oh, that was not quite as good. You lose five gold there, so you're down to uh, eight. But you're still up three gold. Okay. After, okay, I just won. I can't leave the table without with losing that much. So I'm going to try one last time. And I'm going to bet <laughs> the re- the remaining eight gold I've got. Okay. I know. Right. That's why I'm doing it. And I rolled an 18. 18? All right. Uh, you get five gold back. So you're back up to 13. Cool. All right. Well, I'm, I assume this took a while, and I'm just yep. going to let I'm going to let it go with that. I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Didn't right. walk away. Look, you look up. A couple hours have passed, actually. Uh, so we're going to go real quick to uh, let's see. Uh, Bear Briar was looking for him. We're going to go back to you in a moment, Bear Briar. Um, let's see. That was. Uh, was that Ryle who was just doing that? Yes, it was Ryle. Or, that was Ryle. Okay. So he was just playing blackjack. Yeah, I was just playing blackjack. Ryle was that's what I thought. Okay, just making sure. Uh, I'm getting the names down. I'm getting them down. So, an airfell's playing. All right, so Verabrar, give me a 
a perception check. I rolled an 11. 11. Okay. Uh, so you see, um, you, you wander around a bit, you socialize. Uh, people are very excited to have a out of towner, and, and they, they you're hoping that you sit down and play at some point. Um, you do see the woman uh, you saw before wandering around. Uh, give me a. Well, you don't just perception. Uh, based on that, you don't think she has much of a fighter in her. Uh, she's kind of slight, uh, but she's watching everyone like a hawk. Um, so you still think that she's probably has something to do with security. Uh, at some point, um, you see a uh, a noble come down the stairs, and she will meet him at the base of the stairs, and they will exchange some words. Oh, by the way, I apologize. Um, uh, Ryle, as you were playing that, uh, you had to trade in the money for chips. The chips are more of the golden goose wooden chips. Uh, although when you stand up for the table, they do exchange you out for cash there at the table. Oh, cool. And I probably would have, if I had known, I probably would have bet everything. But okay. Uh, I'm okay with that. All right. I forgot that was a thing here. They do have the they do have the chips, so they seem to keep very good, uh, very close watch of their chips. They don't want them to leave the boat, but they are. Okay. Uh, um, that is what they are using in there. Some folks have huge stacks of these chips, by the way. Like you were very, very puny check, very puny stack. Most people had very big stacks. Yeah, I was trying to to do the uh, the whole, just to not not exactly a smart person go in there and just bet everything. I just ended up getting lucky rolls. Right. So, Verabar, uh, you saw your player companion uh, trying to lose some money. Uh, the bard is sitting in the corner playing some music. Uh, your paladin is just kind of sitting there drinking sullenly. I am uh, so solemn. I am, I'm wanting to people watch. I was letting everyone else have their turns because I feel like that's the most boring of the things. But... His nature is kind of to keep an eye on things, hear rumors, etc. And these particular clientele are the sort of people that he tends to worry about. Um, not just because he's a harper, but just because in general the rich, powerful, and especially once we heard the rumen, rumor about the guy driving to become the new water baron, this is the sort of stuff that I kind of like to keep tabs on and report up my chain if necessary so all right actually well, if you're just in, if you're people watching like everybody else like uh uh Arifel is watching for somebody to try and get a score on or else trying to make some money Verabur is looking for that one dude uh go ahead and give me a perception check Ra. Yeah, no, not me. No. I am not looking Sorry. at other people. I'm at, yeah. I was even looking at my fucking cheat sheet that I have, and I still said the wrong fucking name. Caldus, give me a uh, <laughs> check. 20. All right. Uh, you see something kind of odd. You're not sure exactly what's going on, but at one of the uh, uh, roulette tables, you see uh, the woman pass by, uh, and she kind of pauses for a moment. And she leans over and whispers something in someone's ear. Uh, and the person just kind of uh, stands up. Uh, they cash out their... Win uh, they leave their all their... Actually, they leave all their winnings on the table. Uh, and they just walk over... They walk out the door off the side of the boat. Uh, Are we talking out about the, Pao on, Ming or just a random yeah. woman? Nope, Pao Ming. Uh, Wait, did you say she walked off the side of the boat? Well, that's, that's what I was going to see. So they rolled a 20, right? 2-0. Users, yeah, you're paying enough attention. It catches your eye that you know, she just kind of leaned over and whispered something in this person's ear. Uh, Palmin did not walk off the boat, but some the other person at the table stood up, uh, walked out the door, and a moment later you hear a splash, and it sounds like they just jumped off the side of the boat. Where does Palmin head from there? Oh, she just keeps walking, doing her rounds. Hmm. The dealer did clears up the chips that are left on the table. Does anyone else seem to notice this? Uh, the other people at the table do. Uh, it kind of quiets them down for a moment, but then the dealer, the uh, croupier, uh, kind of you know, wraps the table and everyone goes back to game. 
With that said, help me like paint a mental picture of this boat. Is there a way that I could walk out aside from where that person just went and kind of loop back around? Are there guards out there? Uh, there are some. There are a few guards scattered about, uh, but they're not paying any particular attention to anyone in particular. There are doors all along, like big, you know, like archways. Uh, you can get out to the outside, however. You wish. Um, I would, if if it's not too obvious, I would head for a door that is down, that is further down towards the rear of the ship, and walk out. Uh, otherwise, I would go out the opposite side and loop around, whichever is the least inconspicuous, or the, the most inconspicuous. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're easily able to. Are you trying to be sneaky about it, or are you just trying to, or are you just walking I, out? I just kind of want to look like a guy that got bored, needed to step out for some air, have a cigarette, whatever. Okay, they give me a uh, performance check. 14. 14? Yes, sir. What is that? Sounds like a TV. Not I. And it mysteriously goes quiet. Alright. Just throwing it out there. If there is time um, in between his um, performances, Arafil would also like to have his hand in a game. But he'd be more concerned with trying to find somebody to shack up with and gold dig. Okay. Uh, well, I'll let you do that here again in a moment once I finish this up. I um, figured that. I just wanted to throw it out there in case it was like, all right, you know, boat explodes. Yep. What do you do? <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah. You, you, uh, you walk out there. Um, get uh, Hunter, Caldris, uh, you walk out. You kind of look over the back. You see someone swimming to shore. The river, the river is wide. Uh, it would be probably too far to cross, uh, although he's starting in the middle, so he's got a bit of a head start. Um, and uh, you, behind you, you hear a soft woman voice say uh, he was using weighted dice. Well, first things first, is he swimming back in the general direction of Yartar, or does he appear to be just swimming to whatever's closest? I mean, he's swimming towards the shore. I meant, like, is he heading back towards town, or is he just heading to land? Like, he's heading towards the land. Okay. Uh, it, town is a ways back. It's, it's a little before midnight still, so they're still heading away from town. Okay. Um, so he's heading. He's just heading to the land right now. Uh, I'm going to kind of turn towards the, the voice then. Okay. Uh, you see a small Asian-looking woman uh, kind of staring up at you. I, uh... Uh, she says, you should not concern yourselves with people who would, with those who would cheat our paying customers out of their money. Yeah, I imagine that of all the places to try um, to pull one over, that this is not the establishment that that you uh, you want to swindle. Uh, she smiles and she says, quite. Um, and she will pull a uh, one of the tokens out of a pouch uh, and she'll hand it to you and say, this is good for uh, this is a this is good for five gold. Why don't you go and try your hand? Uh, perhaps you will get lucky. Uh, you are very perceptive. That can help in some of these games, and she'll turn and go back into the uh, into the den to uh, keep an eye on the gamblers. Before uh, before she had left, I would have kind of nodded and just said, "Suppose the seat just opened up," and then I would have 
left as well. All right, very good. Um, uh, let's go back to Verabar. It's been a minute since we've been to him. Um, actually, I think it was who's been who was first. Verabar would love more series of Verabar or Aerofell. It's been a while for both. Of them. What I don't mind either way. Yeah, I don't mind either. Okay. Well, you're Matt. You're at the top of the list. So Verabra, um, you still see that uh, noble who walked down the stairs, kind of uh, standing at the edges. Uh, people are going up and shaking his hand and uh, interacting with him. Okay. I would like to like. I don't want to like run over anybody to get an audience with him, but you know, to step up and introduce myself to him. Okay, uh, he then, will smile. He will smile at you. He is a, a middle-aged human, uh, kind of graying a little bit. He is dressed in, um, dressed in a bit of finery, um, unadorned in terms of like jewelry or whatnot, except for a a rapier he has uh, at his belt uh, that has a bejeweled octopus upon the hilt. Okay. And he does greet you and says, ah, yes, um, I guessed. Uh, I had heard from the captain that you were uh, going to be joining us this evening. Uh, and I believe I hear the uh, dulcet tones of your friend uh, coming from the bar. How wonderful. Uh, please, how can I help you? Right. This guy, I am going to tell that I am a member of the Lord's Alliance. Um and try to gauge his reaction, obviously, from there. Okay. Uh, give me an insight. Thirteen. Thirteen? Okay. Uh, he kind of smiles at you. He's, you know, he recognizes it and says, oh, yes, our, uh, our esteemed allies. We, you know, we contribute very much to the defense of the North, and we appreciate all the work that uh, you all do. I don't have anything directly to do with them. You may want to speak with uh, um, with uh, Ruthiel if you uh, have anything, if you have any particular needs. Perhaps one day I will be worthy to join your august company, uh, but at the moment I am merely a uh, I, am, I am merely the owner of the humble establishment you see before you, as well as some other properties throughout Yartar. And he kind of smiles at you. Okay. Um, I, I guess I figure if he can take the seat from Rukio, he deserves it. It's kind of the Lord's Alliance -like thing, but it's not even Lord's Alliance thing, it's just a Lord's thing. Like, yeah. there's a noble who has a seat, and no other noble gets it. You don't yeah, know the so I'm, I'm totally down for that game. Does it, all like, right. from all the rumors, does it seem like he's gonna, like, beat out this other guy? Uh, based on the rumors you got, it, you know, he seemed... You didn't pick up anything that said he was a bad guy, just that he was kind of a, you know, a rich noble with aspirations. I mean, does he seem to be, like, winning favor? Like, does he seem like he has a chance of success? To become well, a librarian. I mean, all of the nobles here are people who like him because they're on his ship. Uh, so they all quite seem, they seem like he, everybody seems to be like, if from between, oh, he's a nice enough fellow to, oh, he should definitely be in charge. But again, this is a selection of the top, you know, 20 or 30 nobles in the city. All right, well, I'm going to schmooze and try to get it on the ground floor with this guy. Okay. With him specifically or with uh, people around him? Um, I mean, preferably with him, but, like, I don't want to, like, feel like I'm overbearing and, like, always no, up on him. Again, you're, you're, you are, you know, a novelty tonight, uh, being from, you know, such a, uh, Waterdeep is, you know, the biggest city around, but it's still quite a ways away. It's a week or two away from here by road. Um, so they don't get many, many people out here from there. Uh, so he's more than willing to... Yeah, you know, have a conversation with you. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, some sort of charisma roll for 
uh, chatting him up, probably persuasion um, or something along those lines. Well, the twenty-three, your persuasion. Okay. Yeah, uh, you have ma- you have made yourself quite a little friend. Uh, he is more than happy to uh, have a conversation with about any topic you wish. Okay, I'm going to ask him uh, one, just about the town, but two, if he knows anything about the giants. Okay, uh, but he can tell you anything you want to know about the town. As far as the giants, uh, he says he hasn't really heard anything about them. Um, doesn't he? He's, his concern is with the city and with the river, and there has been any problems around Yartar recently with giants. Um, as far as uh, the city, what do you wish to know? Uh, I just wanted to kind of give me an insight into the like the political game. I mean, I don't need to know it, obviously, out of character, but like just so that Vera Brar has like a grounding in it. If ever it needs to come up later, so like the ins and outs of the politics of the nobility in Yartar. Gotcha. He kind of smiles at you, um, and he'll tell you that you know they are a loyal member of the Lords Alliance. They are you know tasked with protecting this particular stretch of the Saren River in the Valley. Um, he doesn't feel that he personally does not feel that Ruthiel. Uh, puts enough effort into it. Uh, there are usually bandits around and that sort of thing. Uh, there was a whole problem a couple of years ago with some strange cultists in the hills um, for a summer, uh, and she didn't do anything. She didn't seemingly do anything to help with that. Uh, someone from the south had to take care of it. So uh, based out, based out of Red Larch. So he's he's not terribly tough on to her. Okay. Excellent. All right. Then, yeah, I'll just keep, like, chatting with them about, okay. you know, whatever topics. But those were the two that I actually wanted to know about. Very good. Uh, so we'll go back over to Arafil. Arafil, go ahead and give me a performance roll to see if you know how much more money you make. And then give me a perception check. All right. And you can't have guidance because you're nowhere near your <laughs> All right. Uh, really distracted. Oh, I rolled the wrong. I rolled the wrong thing. Hold on. Oh, I bombed an eight. Eight total. Oh, I don't. I don't have guidance. So eight. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know Bard could roll that roll in performance. Um, the uh, the gold kind of starts uh, dying down a little bit. Uh, your fingers are getting tired. You're not paying as much attention. You're paying too much attention to the people around you. You're not getting the good tunes in. Uh, you only managed to make nine gold that time. Uh, All right. We'll just say actually, one. I'll, you, I'll, I'll be nice. I'll roll. I'll roll two d twelve for you. So let's give you a chance. Oh, that's bad. It's twenty gold total. Yeah, the first time I feel you bad for me. fifteen. You got a d one hundred. I just didn't get a great roll. Ooh. Um, but you make a bit bit there. And then what's your perception check? Perception is a fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Uh, you as you're playing, your focus. The reason you're not getting that much uh, in terms of your performance is slipping is because you do happen to see a uh, slightly older woman, um, a bit more rotund perhaps than is stylish, uh, covered <laughs> in uh, just draped in silk. Uh, she has a begemmed kind of hairnet going, uh, and she is playing the shit out of some crafts. Um, so. I'll try to catch her eye. Do, like, have I seen her look up at me at all while I was playing, or no? Uh, she, I, you, at one point you hit kind of a coarse note, and she kind of looks over at you, uh, but then she okay. went back to the game. So after um after I play, I'm gonna um I'm gonna walk over to her playing craps, and uh, I'm gonna you know stand next to her um, and whisper to her. I apologize, you know, for the terrible performance, but um, I've been distracted by you, um, you know, the entire night. Um, <clears throat> would you mind if I uh, joined in uh, on this game? All right. Uh, give me a persuasion check. 17. Okay. Uh, when you say that, when you start whispering in her ear, uh, you lay your hand on hers and she will turn towards you kind of in surprise and she will uh, immediately invite you to uh, join her. Uh, attractive 
uh, young. Uh, up, you appear to be a man without until you show your wings, right? A human. Yeah, yeah, I appear. I'm just like a naturally like. I'm just amazingly good looking. <laughs> it's the way that I understand Azamars to be. They're just be- better looking humans. Okay. I mean, I I haven't looked at. It. I thought maybe you could choose whether you're like a human or an elf or something. But okay, yeah. So you are a good looking young man, and she is quite quite willing to share her company <laughs> with good looking young men, and she will invite you to come and join her. She asks you to like blow on her dice for luck. Uh, she'll give you big hugs when she wins. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's uh, she's quite happy to have a uh, gentleman companion for the evening. Um, I'm going to ask her if I can um, join in and, and put down some of uh, my own money. Uh, yeah, uh, she's more than willing to let you uh, to have some of that. All right, I'll say that um, you know, um, I can only bet a modest amount. Um, I, I did not make much from performing, um, but I'm lucky that. Um, I'm able to spend the rest of the evening in your company if you'd have me, and I'll I'll bet something like ten or fifteen gold. Okay, uh, fifteen gold. So, as you go, to, as you pick up the dice to throw them, she leans down and whispers in your ear, uh, "A better performance later might earn you a lot more money." Oh. Uh, as you uh, throw the dice, so go ahead and give me a. Uh, if you have, if you're compi- if you're proficient with gaming dice, uh, you can roll that. I am. All right. Uh, otherwise, slide a hand. I am proficient, and I rolled a nine. I don't get advantage on that, do I? Unless I... Um, honestly, after the shock from that whisper, you probably get disadvantage. But, uh... <laughs> I'm, like, so holding back the vomit, but... Um, I am proficient with it, but I rolled a nine. That doesn't give me advantage. I've, I've never really used any sort of, um... Uh, tool, profic- uh, tool proficiencies. But I don't, I yeah, don't it, 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 just, it just it's gives different. you advantage with it. It just gives you advantage with the dice. So basically, for a dice, it'll be dexterity plus uh, plus your proficiency. So d twenty plus dex plus proficiency. Oh yeah, so then I, I just rolled a nine. Wait, hold on. Nine plus plus. Dex plus proficiency. Plus oh, then I yes. let me just roll it with the. Well, I'll just add it to my roll. My roll was a six. Excuse me, it was a five, and. My dex is three and proficiency is three, so it's plus six. It would be an eleven, I think. I'm not botching it at anybody, am yeah. I? So you, you you roll a couple and you make pretty good money there. Crafts you can turn, you can turn a decent profit. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, you make I can make twenty gold uh, on those rolls. Uh, she kind of gives a woo and gives you a big hug. <laughs> She is betting. She's also betting. The way crafts, I, I don't understand crafts completely, but like people can bet on what you roll. So she made some money on that as well, much more than you did. But she bet a lot more. Not, not having spoken to my companions and knowing anything that they may have learned about, um, you know, the Lord. What is it, Dryland? Dryland. Uh, um, I would ask her. Um, I'm going to pretend to be very smitten with her, and I'll ask her, "Are you? Do you, um, you know, own this this gambling boat?" And then, if once she says no, assuming she says no, I'll ask if she knows who does, and I'll start. I'll inquire a bit about that. Okay. Yeah, she does not. She'll point out uh, Lord Dryland, and you'll see that he is currently chatting with uh, uh, with Barbara. They seem to be having a chummy conversation, and she'll just kind of call it. She'll be like, "He's." I've known him for years. We grew up together. Uh, he's always been so silly, so caught up with his boats and his horses. Now he thinks he's going to be the water, but the next water baron. Oh, very silly. I'll, I'll seem really interested, but like more interested in her. Like as if I'm just nodding at the words, watching her mouth, seducing her. And her okay. ro- robust um, body. All right, give me a perception check. Not perception, uh, performance again. I'm sorry. Uh, damn. With my two perception, I doubt I'm going to beat my seven performance, which I'm probably going to roll really shitty on. 18. No, not bad. 18, 18 on performance? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you, as she's talking, you, uh, 
she gets, uh, you're not paying, you're like, you're kind of seducing her, but you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, you're kind of more walk, watching the dice roll. Uh, so you are surprised when she rings down and kisses you and leads you to a, a quiet corner somewhere. I will follow. Oh, you don't have a choice. She's bigger than you. <laughs> um, Ryle, what do you do after you uh, watch the person get... Well, he hasn't He hasn't get thrown overboard. He throws himself overboard. Oh, that's Caldrus. Sorry. Yeah, uh, this is Caldrus. Oh, I've, oh, I've been... Oh, oh. I betted. I'm yes. done for now. Okay. Yeah, so Caldrus, I'm sorry. So, yeah, so you're, after, you, after you watch the person throw himself overboard, what do you do? I'm going to walk back inside and see what uh, my glorious trio of friends is doing. Okay. Uh, so what you see, um, you see Verabrar uh, chatting with uh, a noble, uh, kind of off to one side. Uh, you see uh, Ryle sitting at a table, uh, kind of gnawing on a fingernail, trying to figure out what he's doing. Uh, give me a perception check to see if you can even see uh, Arafel. I'm going to just go ahead and say no, and I'll wander <laughs> over to... Uh... To where Ryle's at. If there's okay. an open chair at his table, I'll sit down as well. Okay, there'll be an open chair. Verabra, you, you're still sitting there. Uh, not Verabra, God. Oh, are you going to join Ryle or are you joining Verabra? The cleric, Ryle. Ryle, okay. So, Ryle, you're still sitting at a table playing uh, cards, right? Uh, that's what I was doing, yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me another uh, a slide of hand check. Unless you're done. No, no. Um, if you're going to go over there and join me, yeah, yeah I'll play another round. I, mean, um, I rolled an eight. An eight? Okay. So you are going to lose a little bit there. We don't have D12. Uh, D12. Uh, yeah, so you lose two more gold. Okay. Uh, and then you see uh, your paladin friend walk up behind you, uh, bouncing a wooden chip in his hand. I'm going to say, well, it was until you walked up. Apparently, you're bad luck. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean anything I'm... bad, but uh, <laughs> I brought you a chip, and I'll like flip it on my thumb kind of towards him. All right, okay. I, my eyes are going to kind of, kind of uh, brighten. So, well, hey, why don't you, why don't you sit down and join us? I've been having, good, I've been having some good luck tonight, and I can tell them that I just made like eleven gold. Yep. When you say that, a couple you hear some chortles from behind uh, handkerchiefs, so handkerchiefs. Uh, and I'm going to be completely oblivious. I've always been. Uh... <laughs> Never had much luck when it comes to this sort of stuff, but I, uh, I mean, I could give it a try. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I just dropped my uh, phone. What was that? I said, uh, Calder says uh, I've never had much sort of much luck at this sort of stuff, but I guess I could give it a try. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me a either a. Uh, if you're proficient with cards, go ahead and give me a card roll, otherwise sleight of hand. Mm. So I'm going to just bet the chip, which is five gold. And uh, three. Three? Yep. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and say you immediately lose all five of that. The entire thing it just disappears. Like, ten minutes. I'll just kind of shrugs and go, see? And I, I don't have anything else to say at that point. And I welcome, I welcome. handkerchiefed chortles. Yes, no. you do know that chortles. Not everyone has as much luck as I do. Uh, uh, so it's about midnight now. Uh, if there's anything in particular you guys wish to do, uh, let me know. Otherwise, we can fast forward and get into uh, the trip at about four in the morning when you get back to docks. Uh, is there any other conversations you wish to have? Anyone you wish to speak with? Uh, anything you wish to do in particular? 
depending on how my evening goes, I mean, I know where it's going with this woman. Um, I'm going to try to tell her some sort of a sob story. Um, not ask her for money, but tell her some sort of a sob story that would um, persuade her that um, if she was so inclined to give me more than she was already perhaps inclined to give me. Okay. Yes, you have found yourselves uh, like in the back corner. There's no rooms here um, on the boat, like private rooms. Uh, but there, mm. there's, there's like a uh, she. She is fairly well versed with this uh, doing this, and she has found a. She knows like at the back of the boat where there's like a tarp over some barrels that you can go and snuggle up in, <laughs> which she does. Um, go ahead and give me a pers uh, persuasion roll. Twenty-one. Okay. Oh yes. Uh, as you uh, you give her quite the sob story. Uh, you don't cry, but like your eyes glisten. Uh, she holds you tightly and pats you on the head. Uh, <laughs> and as you guys get back to dock, she hands you a bag full of one hundred gold. Oh. Um, I'll take her hand. I'll, I'll kiss it. Um, I'll ask her her name because I'm sure I didn't <laughs> before. <laughs> and um, I'll tell her to. I'll make up, or I'll, what's the name of a town nowhere near Waterdeep? Uh, give me, give me a history roll, see if you can remember any at the moment. Mm. Nine. Nine? Uh, you like, you can, you say like something like Luskin, which is not, is a big city, but it's not terribly close to a lot of people. It's a few weeks away. I'll, I'll tell her I'm heading to Luskin and to look me up. Um, come, come watch me perform if you're ever if you're ever in the neighborhood. Okay, uh, she kind of sniffles and pulls her, uh, wipes her eyes clear and uh, thanks you for a wonderful evening. And you walk away with a hundred pounds richer, a hundred gold richer, and, <laughs> less, and with much less of your dignity. <laughs> I'll find the others and walk up and um, not tell them what happened and just. Um, pull out the pouch and let it clang in my hands, then hide it away and ask how everyone else did it. And before you do that, I'm going to talk about how I just made a whole 11 gold gambling right before you pull out that huge sack of gold. And I'm I'll, proud say of something. I'll say something like um, there's a lot more gold um, in games that don't require luck. And I'll just smile. I'll grin to myself. Kind of uh, Alright, I just rolled a 19 for perception. Did I see Arafiel sneak off with that woman? Uh, you didn't see him sneak off, but you definitely saw him uh, sneak out of the tarp, uh, and you saw underneath a quite meaty uh, thigh. I'm just going to shake my head knowingly. <laughs> I didn't catch any of that. I didn't even catch what Calders knew. Uh, he noticed uh, uh, he noticed Arafel uh, coming uh, coming out out of the tarp with a kind of meaty thigh uh, resting beside him. Yeah. Um. I'm going to get up so, from the card table because I clearly <laughs> should not be sitting at it. Yes. Um, so you're able to, you can go back to, like I said, we're, we're going to fast forward to the end of the night unless there's anything particular you wish to do. Uh, you guys are uh, able to, uh, we'll, we'll and speed up for a couple hours unless there's something, uh, some conversation to have. Verabra, was there anything you wish to uh, talk about before we end the evening? Uh, nope, I covered what I wanted to talk to the noble about. Okay, very good. I'll so let sorry. I'll let the the group know what I learned about um, where Dryland. And knowing what Varavaran knows, it, it, I think he knows a little bit more than I do. Just that he's trying to become the um, the Lord of Waterdeep or the um, Water Baron of Yartar. Water Baron, there you go. Of Yartar, Jesus. A few hours later. 
All right. So you guys get back to the docks. It's about an hour before dawn. It's starting to brighten a little bit. Uh, and you guys can do as you wish to do. Uh, we'll take a quick five-minute break and come back. Okay. California's on fire again. Forest? I don't know exactly how bad it is, but the roads from here to Bakersfield are all closed off, and I've seen probably six or seven passes of the uh, helicopters picking up water. Oh, shit. This shit happens every year, but uh, every year you can take a quick trip down the highway and see two or three people just fling cigarettes out the window and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I used to smoke. I smoke a stupid vape, as I'm sure you've heard before, but yeah. like, I try not to fling them out of the car, especially. Ah, oh, shit, I just built a ton of water. Good job. Especially in, <laughs> in, uh, in areas like that. Uh, base here caught fire last September. It was it was amazing. Um, I hadn't moved down here yet, but I was seeing posts about it on the internet and everything. Uh, I don't remember what started it. I think it was power lines and high winds, but a fire started. And of course it started in the like super hilly, hard to get to part of base where there's nothing at. And... I, I, I've seen the email before, the email that went to the, the base commander and then from the base commander to like uh, the headquarters going, hey, there's a small fire on South Base. Shouldn't be too much, but just letting you know. And then fast forward four days later, 11,000 acres had burned. Two other Jesus fires Christ. had started on base and it was like, it was a major thing. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I have pictures. At first it was like... But then it was like... Yeah, yeah it's not too bad. I mean, that's uh, a really bad fire. I was muted. What, what is that tower? That is slip that is three. three. That is Space Launch space Complex launch 3, launch. owned by ULA, which is the United Launch Alliance. It's kind of like the Federation of Planets. It's a conglomeration of Boeing and several other companies that come together to do space things. Like NASA's the government space thing, and SpaceX is like a private corporation space thing. Well, this is a mm. alliance of corporations that all chip in on Fire and Atlas Vibes. I'll find you a video since we're talking about space stuff on break. I love space. Kind of fond of space. <laughs> I'm just, I didn't have a direct quote from um, the most recent White House. Uh, I don't know. Not talk. Jesus. And that wasn't a speech. Press conference. That, that's how shot my brain is after driving 14 hours a day. Uh, um, on space with buzz aldrin was there making faces did you see that i haven't seen video it, no. uh, YouTube just when the work. session's over yeah oh. youtube doesn't work at work for me the, the internet's too crappy and then as soon as i got off work we move furniture and uh 
now I'm here. I think this might, this might have been a few days ago. Um, I happened to see something on Imager, and I just happened to go and look at the actual video, and it was just, it was just funny. He was uh, Trump was just talking about um, you know providing more money for um, launches in NASA and shit, and um, Buzz Aldrin's um, reactions to some of the things that Trump was saying was was quite hilarious. Nice. His, just his facial expressions were. He, um, he seems he was like, like that kind of guy, though. Buzz. Yeah, just like I, I can't believe this <laughs> shit right now. Yeah, yeah, that's exact. Like the the amount of times that his eyes just went wide and like he just smiled and nodded, and you can just tell he was just like, like, you know, I mean, politics aside, he's not the most eloquent man in the world. Yeah. Um, he's about as bad as I am playing a bard, and <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Uh, not the first video. I accidentally copy pasted the wrong one. That's like a 26 minute video. But if you go to the second video, it's like a two minutes long. But you'll see that the facility in that first picture, the entire facility actually moves because of, obviously it's easier to move the building than to hope that if you're moving the rocket, it doesn't explode. Uh, but <laughs> all the doors on the all front the of that facility open up and then all of the floors around the rocket fold out of the way. And the entire building is like on giant railroad tracks and moves out of the way. And we've fired several Atlas Vs from from that structure. Wow, it, this video does provide a great perspective of just how large and impressive it is. I, I saw it moving, and I, uh, I don't mean to humble brag, but since we're talking about it, the one in that second video I've actually been inside of. It's NRO. N R O L seventy nine. Uh, right about eleven floors up is where the Centaur section connects to the Atlas section of the rocket. The difference in stage one and stage two, and I had to go inside it to do a hot work permit because there was a microscopic leak on one of the components inside. And in order to fix that, since there was no way to take it out of the rocket, they would have had chewing to... gum. Yes. They uh, they would have had to downstack it and send it all the way back to depot, which would have delayed the launch by like six months. So <laughs> my office had to yeah. go in there and say, "Yes, you can weld on this, and it will not blow up and kill everybody." <laughs> That's pretty the cool. Thing, yeah, the craziest thing to me is, wh who was the engineer who thought, you know what, it would be easier to move the building instead of moving the rocket? There's a that takes him out of the box thinking. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that that happens in my office. Um, well, not my particular work section, but I work with all of those engineers like doing that sort of stuff. The the guy in the cubicle directly across from mine, his the, the sign hanging above his uh, cubicle is Flight Termination Systems Technology and Engineering. And I'm just like, I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, that's a little over my head. Uh... I just hear him yeah. out there talking about coding termination systems and stuff, and I'm like, okay, dude, knock yourself out. I'll, I'll be over here, posting in D&D. I have, I have trouble trying to calculate the change that is due back to me, like at a gas station after buying, you know, something that's like eight dollars and ninety-seven cents, and I gave the girl a twenty. Like, <laughs> I can't even imagine doing things like that. Get out your fingers. All right. Yeah. Three makes the next dollar. It's like I don't have no fingers. <laughs> Start looking down at my feet, imagining my toes under my sneakers. I enjoy that there's a random four-minute space launch conversation in the middle of this D&D recording now. Yeah. I haven't. The only person I've heard is Matt. Is Matt available? I'm here. Okay. All right. So we are back. It is about an hour before dawn, and you are on the docks of Yardhar. You have not had any sleep. All right. Um, I was going to be happy about my 11 gold um, winnings, but someone had to show me up. So I'm just ready to get back yes, to but the he, but he got, But he got that by losing. <laughs> well, I don't know that. I, I just know that he, he won 100 gold and all our one was 11. <laughs> Uh, 
And I'm sure he did not tell us that or how he got the gold. Nope. That's going to stay with me and Verber until one of us decides to tell the others. And it's not going to be me unless we run into that lady again. I say, well, I don't know about you, but um, I want some sleep. Is there any other any um, other inns nearby that we think we might be able to um, find some lodging? Yeah, there's plenty of inns around, and there's a both of the shitty kind and the slightly more upscale. There's nothing really nice down by the docks, but there are, you know, reasonably well where like the merchant the owners of the caravans would rest up. They don't put their workers there, but they themselves could rest there for the night comfortably. Arafil will try to find one and start walking towards it and say that tonight's lodging is on him um, after his um, earnings and he'll grin. Um, he can he can pay for lodging um, tonight and not go to one of the shittier, grimier ones, but maybe something middle of the road. Well, I'm okay, probably well. not going to stop you if you offer up the pay. I, uh, I got five gold for for having a keen eye and lost five gold for having a slow hand. <laughs> or mind. I forget which one it is. <laughs> but it might be the mind. Shrug. Well, if you forgot. I'm going to go back to... Um, well, after we determine which inn we're going to, I'm going to go back to the cart, check up on all our stuff, cast another animate construct, and um, come back. Okay. Yeah, I, I could do that. I could get my weapons and armor just to have them with me. Yeah. I'd like to get my weapons and armor, too. might not be wearing the armor outright, but I'll keep it in my room. I only have two pairs of clothes, my armor and my robes, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm almost have to right. around chain mail. So you guys rest up, you wake up, it's about midday. Um, you had your long rest. Uh, you could stay here for the rest of the day and leave tomorrow, or you could go ahead and head out and go start on the travel. Okay, Ryle right. doesn't care. Um, Y'all are the ones doing the political stuff. <clears throat> are there any shops nearby um, that we might be able to find some out of the ordinary Herbs. goods? Yeah, any you can find any ordinary goods you want here in uh, in uh, Yartar. It's a big enough hub where they can have any shop. You can find plenty of shops that offer whatever you're looking for. Uh, maybe potions or anything like that, though. No. Uh. We will say no on the potions mm -hmm. just because I don't have a decent way of doing my rolls for it. Sure. I meant to switch you guys over to the map at work today. I was so busy I couldn't. Are y'all not going to explore the, the whole um, Water Baron deal? No, I just, just wanted, I just wanted to schmooze the one guy in case he ends up winning later. Okay. And then other than that, I'm good to go. It's something that Caldrus has taken note of, but I don't know enough about the guy to outright assume malice at this point. Um, I didn't gather any particular information on the ship, and obviously everyone there is not going to speak ill of him. So, I mean, I could keep an ear out in town, but I feel like the the other things we have on our plate currently uh, bear more weight than political games in a minor river town. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, uh, the the boat, I forgot to ask, is it just a boat or does it look like a really nice party boat? It's a, it's a very nice river craft. It's got many oars. Uh, it's two stories. Uh, it's made of wood, but it's very well-kept wood. 
like they they regularly use sealant on it or whatever. Um, it was decorated finely, uh, so it is a very very nice boat. It's a nice enough boat you might almost call it a ship. Okay. All right, do you guys head on, or do you? What? When do you guys head out? Getting to say that I'd like to get a little bit of sleep first. Midday. But I'm an owl, so I don't eat much. Well, we did spend the okay. night in the inn. It's morning, so. Well, you, you, spend, you spend the morning at the inn. It's about noon when you guys wake up. Yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm good to leave then. Yeah. I guess so. So we'll we'll have yep. a, a lunch, a proper meal at the inn or whatever, and then set out on the road early afternoon. What could I subtract for the um for the inn and for lunch? Uh, I miss my PM screen. It was an inn in that base. That's a useful chart. I'll mark you. All right, let's see. Food. Um, comfortable would be five silver, so two gold for everybody's food. Uh, we'll say that's a modest end, so it'll be two gold for the end as well. Uh, it's four gold total. Four gold total. All right, then you guys head out. Uh, let's see, everybody give me survival checks to see if you know what's coming up and how far you are, how much travel you have. Okay. Um... Ryle's gonna have the uh, the golems drive the uh, the cart while he is in the back working on things. Arfield's also he's sitting in the front, but he's fine with letting them drive. He'll just sit in the middle playing some music, trying to get them to bob their heads and sway back and forth. <laughs> the highest yeah. is one too. Really good to have someone who's actually smart to watch. Guess I'm not sure they're physically capable <laughs> of driving the boat, driving the cart. Smart might be pushing it, but I'm somewhat alert. Well, it's probably good to have someone there to make sure they don't drive it into a cliff or into a ditch. Keep it between the and... ditches and the shiny side up. <laughs> Wait, how do I have the same? survival role as a ranger your wisdom your cleric he's cleric probably not proficient wisdom. yeah I, I know but right, what'd you guys roll I got a 22 he's in the back <laughs> I rolled a 21 I'm in the front and Verabrar and Caldress are on horses they both rolled fives okay um but I'm a ranger, so I have all this special, like, can't get lost, can't screw up, crap. Right, well, it's not a matter of getting lost. Like, you know exactly where you are, but it's a matter of knowing what's next along this road. It's hard to get lost I on the road. Anyway. You're, you're on a, yeah, you're on, a, you're on a major road here. Then you know in general you're heading in the direction of Silvery Mood and Everland. Uh, those of you who rolled well know that you're on the next stop on the road is a place called Calling Horns. Uh, which is an inn. Uh, you must have picked up. You must have asked around at the previous inn about it. Uh, but as about four days ride, um, you are passing by. You're passing through some pretty rough territory. There's the uh, Desterin Hills to the south. Um, there are the. Uh, there are some hills to the north that give way to the Evermores, a troll-infested swamp to the north. Um, as you get uh, as you get further and further east. Uh, the first day, you managed to make pretty decent time. Get about uh, you're only traveling about half the day, so you're going to make about uh, 10, 15 miles. 
before he had to make camp. Uh, this area is still patrolled by Yartar. It's within the their general zone of control. So we'll make a roll for the daytime, but at night, uh, let's see, I think it is uh, Arafel. Please give me a d20. 19. Okay. Give me a d100, please. 26. 26. Uh, all right. At the 26, roll me a D. Let's see. What could it hit? Uh, four, five, six, seven. Roll me a D10. Don't You want to roll a seven or higher. Oh, so you want to roll over a seven, so eight, nine, or ten. Eight. Eight? Okay. A giant rock just smashes down uh, in the midst of your camp as you're building the fire. Um. <clears throat> But there, I'll give you guys all a, I'll be, I'll be, it's, it's kind of obvious. So give me all perception checks, uh, but realize it's going to be about a 15 DC. I'm assuming we're either awake or we've all woken up from that. Yes. Okay. I rolled. I, okay, well, someone rolled better than me. How much are you thinking this is like, if you guys have set up camp, but you haven't gone to bed for the night because I didn't make you guys do a, a watch. Is it possible for me to do something immediately? Well, let's see what. Let's see if you're surprised if this rock falls since it didn't hit anybody. Let's see if it's. I should have had it done. This is to see if you're surprised or not. Oh, I'm probably I'm surprised then. So never mind. Did anybody roll over a fifteen? Everybody except for Arafil rolled over a fifteen. Okay. Uh, so all of you smell smoke around you. Uh, you think there may be another camp around or something, uh, and then the rock lands among you. Uh, as you spin around, you see, uh, striding through the trees, a fire giant, uh, as well as uh, a couple of little smoky figures uh, running through the crags. Uh, running down through the trees, rather, from the north. And we will need to roll initiative. <clears throat> How far away are they? Uh, the giant's probably about... Let's see how far the giant can throw one of those stones. He's about uh, 50 feet away from you. You said 50? Sorry. Yeah, 50. Five zero. Thank you. I forgot to mention, Matt, I drove through the absolute ghetto of D.C. today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No Congress? <laughs> I don't know where I was. We, My my daughter was welling. Um, it was very, very early this morning, like 1.30 in the morning, and my daughter was welling, and we pulled over. I don't even remember where we were, um, what road we were on. But um, we pulled over into a gas station. I got off the highway and pulled into a gas station. And it was, let's just say I was out of my element. <laughs> but I, I thought of you. You crossed my mind. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Not because it was the ghetto, because we were passing DC. It was because it was the ghetto. Yeah, pretty much. I, I don't know if you live in the ghetto or not. I just... <laughs> I don't even live in D.C. 
Are you in Virginia? How close are yeah. you to? I'm in yeah. Virginia. I drove through there too. I think. I don't know. <laughs> Geography's not there, my strong suit. There, bro. Roll. Uh, I rolled a seventeen for initiative. Uh, Calders. Uh, Ryle? Me and the golems both rolled four. Okay. Uh, Arafel? Eight. Can you guys hear my TV? No. No. Okay. Nope. Just wanted to make sure I have it on low, but... All right. So first up is Verbra. So you see. Uh, so let me just tell you exactly what you see here. So you see uh, the fire giant striding for you, and several figures uh, flitting above it uh, and around it, uh, look like smoky little. Uh, bats or uh, angels or demons. They, they're kind of amorphous. Wonderful. Um, hmm. When did this attack happen? Like, were we set down to go to sleep yet? You were asleep, yeah. no. You were, you were just kind of, you were setting up camp. The sun was, it just set. So how many of these little figures are there? Uh, give me a perception check. Nine. Uh, there are several of them. Um, they, they're again, they're kind of amorphous, so it's kind of hard to tell between the you know the folk between they're kind of smoky and amorphous. Plus the fire giant keeps setting shit on fire around him, so it's kind of hard to tell. But there's several. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to fire an arrow at the fire giant. Okay. And then I'm going to hide after that. And I miss. Unless a nine hits. A nine is not hit. You wish. I do. And then I roll a 15 for stealth. Okay. Uh, okay. Very good. Um... I like how you hide after you try to attack. Um, yeah. So next up is the smoke methods. Sort of wrong stuff. Kind of, sort of. So you see these figures uh, kind of sailing towards you guys. Uh, it looks like there's... Uh, about six of them, actually. Uh, and they kind of scutter along, they kind of scutter along the ground for a bit, and then they hop in the air and they fly a bit. Um, very much like smoke being blown by the breeze. Uh, they end up around 20 feet away from you. Actually, hmm. uh, well, I did say 15, they have 30 feet movements, yeah. Uh, and then we go to the fire giant. Uh, those of you who speak giant uh, hear him uh, kind of muttering to himself. It's like, uh, all I need is a little, a little fun. I can't even hit these puny humans. And he picks up a rock and starts to throw it at one of you again. Uh, let's see. There are. I'm probably going to use cutting words. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, I don't want one of us to get hit with that. Um... Okay. I'll say um, something stupid. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, you guys can give me, please, a. Oh, let's see who's good. Who's next to that? Who's next to that? Arafel. Arafel, give me a D six, please. Five. <laughs> All right. Uh... 
think somebody should have set that first, shouldn't I? So anyway, hold on a second. I'm going to have you do that again. I didn't, set, I didn't set the order of who was what number yet. Okay, give me another D6. All right. Take it fair. <laughs> also a five. <laughs> five. All right. Uh, so, uh, what's the AC of those little autom automa units? Uh, 13, er, yeah, 13. 13, okay, yeah. One of them gets smushed. Uh, I assume they don't have that many. Their skeletons only have, like, what, 10 hit points? We have 13. 13? Uh, the minimum that they can do with that rock is... Seeing that he's going to throw it at one of the expendables, no offense, Ralph, um, I'm not going to use cutting words. I'm not going to waste it to save one of them. Okay. Thanks. No um, offense, sorry. Yeah, if, I'm not even going to bother rolling. The minimum they can do is 11, so he's going to do more than that. So, um, yeah, one of them just gets smushed. Um, and then we go to Arafel. Um, how much does this giant weigh? I feel like I keep asking this, and it's over 500 pounds, right? He's fucking huge. Yes, he's a giant. Both, yeah. Um, well, first, I'm going to use Bardic Inspiration on Caldrus. Caldrus, you have a D6. I don't think it's a D8 yet, but I'll check in a second. And then um, the little bat-like things, um, how far are they away from each other? Uh, they're all within about a, let's say, a 20-foot line, you know, scattered about. All right, so then. They're about five feet of each other, um, you know, spaced out. Each one's within five feet of the others, you know, a little line heading towards you. And how many of them are there? Uh, give me a perception check if you like. Fourteen. There are six of them. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use Fairy Fire. I'll try to hit the giant and as many of them as I can, but it's a 20-foot cube. Unless they're too high in the sky, then it's I wouldn't use it. Like, if they're more than 20 feet away from him, I wouldn't. Yeah, the, the giant it. didn't approach, so he's still 50 feet away from you. They're 20 feet away because they moved closer. Mm. So you can catch all of them all right. in it, or you can catch the giant in it. No, fuck it. I'll just above us, I will cast Hypnotic Pattern. Um, I'll play um, on my um, banjo, and I guess the symbol will come from my banjo. I assume I'm standing behind everybody else, but I could put it wherever. I could just cast it instead of having it come from my guitar for flavor, if it doesn't make sense to, um, and have it, you know, pointing at them as well as the giant. I don't know if it's going to affect him, but I'm willing to try. Okay. Well, it will affect him if he fails to save. What's the what's he got to roll for save, and what's the number? It's uh, 15. Is my okay, DC? Is it con? Or charisma. Oh, or sorry. Wisdom. 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 He's not good at wisdom. He's not bad at it, though. Good. Plus two. All right. Fifteen plus two. Nope. He is fucking hypnotized, because of fucking course he's a hate the spell. Anyways. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to take it until the DM was like, well, that's a fucking OP. <laughs> you should take it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the best spell ever. Yeah, it is. I don't know what I was... Uh, debating about. I'm going to give all my fucking monsters a set of eyeglasses that block it. Or the really goddamn Doctor Who sunglasses. Caldrus. One of the <laughs> smoky guys is within 30 feet of me, I believe. So I'm going to march my happy paladin ass over there and attempt to longsword it. That's just before your roll. Sorry, it's a D8 now. It's not a D6. You get a D8 added to your attack or um, not damage, just attack. Yeah. Okay, and I can roll and then declare. Yes, before you know if it hits. Here, let me post it. I'm sorry. Okay. 
gonna swing at one of the smoky gentlemen for 24. Six damage. That'll hit. Okay. Uh, six damage. Uh, will you'll slice through it? Um, it'll kind of cry and it'll give a kind of a cry of alarm, uh, but it will not go down. Uh, do you get a second attack, or you still just get one attack? Uh, I get two because I'm cool now. Yeah, but I miss. Okay. Four. Do you want to roll? Do you want to roll the uh, product inspiration? I have more. Yeah, sure. That's what I was afraid of. I was going to aim for more of the like, at least I rolled a 12, so if I suck, but no, uh, 10 to hit, sir. 10? Nope, 10 still not enough. Uh, it just barely dodges out of the way, but dodges out of the way it does. Uh, Ryle. Okay, I'm pissed that Larry just died. Um, so I'm going to tell Mo to shoot the, uh, the thing. One of the little guys that uh, Cal just, just just attacked, okay. and I'm just gonna have it attack. It rolled a 15. That'll hit for a grand total of three damage. All right. And then I'm gonna charge in and. Uh, Tell everybody that this is what I've been working on while I was in the back. I'm going to swing my Warhammer. And... Miss completely. Good stuff. Good start to the, to the fight. Uh, you're all very impressed with whatever he was working on. Well, so my... Uh, my hammer was going to start glowing with like, or start arcing with electricity, and then I missed, so nothing happened. Um, so he charges in like Thor, and then it kind of pulls against the ground and putters out. Uh, Verabrar. All right, uh, Verabrar will once again be shooting at one of the smoky dudes and hope that it made a effect the last time. He rolled a 20. That was it. Same one that the cleric with it, the uh, paladin was backing on, or a different one? Um. Hmm. Well, I'm. Actually, let's do a different one. Because I'm hidden, right? They don't yep. see me. Yeah, so. For 17 damage. Okay. Very good. Pierces it. You hear. A, this one cries out more in pain than an alarm. And then I'll re-stealth. Oh, wow. With an 11. Okay. So, I yeah. apologize, Ken. Did did the um, did him, hypnotic pattern affect the smoky things? Uh, no, because I, I figured you put it above you, and they're looking, it wouldn't affect it. But you put it eye level for the giant, so it totally affected the giant. That's fine. That's <laughs> more concerned about the giant anyway, so. Yeah. I just I, I assume um, that it had hit everybody. I don't know why, because we didn't mention it, and it makes more sense that way. Gotcha. So sorry. Yep, no worries. Um, but what was I doing? Who was that? Was that Verbra? I was Verbra. Okay. So methods get to go. Uh, uh, I am going to tell the golem to move, and the golem's going to move over. I'm going to tell the golem to guard Arafil. So he's going to move over and kind of shamble in the direct. I guess in between where the shadow things would go to head towards Arafail. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's see here. So, Cald so Ryle and Calders are engaged with the fire things. Uh, Arafail's off with the golem. Um, there are six of those things. Let's see here. First one is going to, there you guys are going to, uh, you, guys, you guys who are up in melee with they're going to see their uh, eyes kind of glow with sparks. Uh, I need you both to give me uh, dexterity saves. DC is 10. Oh man, I rolled a 
rolled a 10. 15. Okay. Um, and then the next one will come, well, that you're standing next to will do the same thing. So, dexterity saves again, please. I rolled an 8. Okay. 18. Alright. Uh, so, uh, Calidus, you, you manage to get your hands up and block these cinders as they come blowing in your face. Uh, Bryle, you are uh, able to get the first one, but you do, you do it by turning away, and when you turn away, there's another one right next to you, and it shoots you in the face with its, uh, uh, with the cinders, and you are blinded. Uh, let's see, until the end of the method's next turn, so this turn you are blinded. Uh, blinded, by the way. Um, you automatically fail any ability check that requires sight. Uh, creatures have advantage against you, they have and you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Um, okay. Let's see here. When they see that, the other, well, the other ones will... Actually, one more is going to try and get you, uh, Caldris. So give me another dexterity save. Ten? Okay, you're good. Uh, with that, the other three will see that uh, you are not affected by their by their flames and their sparks and their embers, uh, but the cleric is, and they'll, they will get swings on Ryle. That one misses anyways. My god damn. Oh, that's a crit. Double crit? Nope, not double crit. So four plus three is seven. Plus a two, so nine damage total. All right. All right. And Fire Giant is all do 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 Arafel. Oh, Verbar went. My bad. Nope. Nope. Oh, Arafel. Yeah, I think Verbar. No, Verbar went first, then me. Smoke Giants, then then Smoke Methods. Fire Giant is stunned. Okay. So, Aerofell. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. I am... There's two that are engaged with them, right? Uh, no, they're surrounded by six of them. Total now. <clears throat> to be precise, Ryle's, so Ryle's surrounded by them. The other... Uh, and then there's a couple others that are about uh, blowing smoke. Um, is are they positioned in such a way that I'd be able to hit uh, uh, as many of them as possible without hitting Ryle, the ones that are surrounding Ryle? How are you going to try and do it? Uh, with uh, AOE. It'll be um, Shatter. I'm going to hit him with Shatter. Okay, I'm saying radius so square or circle is radius. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll say you could hit three of the six without hitting Ryle. I will do that. I'm going to cast Shatter um, above them. Um, wait a second. Sorry, I'm just thinking of the spell. Because, no, because I have it as a third level spell, but it's a second level spell. I'll just cast it as third and we'll call it a day. 16. Uh, save is DC 15 Constitution. DC 15 Constitution. Yep, and I will do something to fix that. I put it. I thought it was a third level spell, so I put it in the third level slot. But but I casted it third level. So all right, that's one. Okay, one of those failed it. And we'll see which ones these are. Okay. Um, so, what was the damage total? Uh, 16 total damage, half damage if they make it. Okay. So the two that were previously wounded uh, go down. And then uh, the other one uh, is still uh, up and hopping mad. <laughs> right. You would probably think these things were kind of cute if they were, you know, trying to gouge your eyes out and burn your eyeballs out of your socket. 
um, Kaldros. I'm going to attack what remains of these little guys. Twelve. Twelve hits. Uh, nine damage on the first attack, and the second one's a 25 for 13, so 22 slashing damage to mm -hmm. either the closest one or one that we've been whacking on earlier. I know one just got... Oh, and so you kill another one, because they have 22 hit points, so... Alright. Three down with one wounded. Uh, and I end my turn. All right. I will move right. if I need to, but otherwise in my turn. Okay, uh, you're still uh, within like 10 feet of Ryle and the other three surviving ones that are attacking him. Um, so, you know, you, you're not in any particular danger at the moment, although you're still right there. The fire giant still appears to be drooling. Okay, well, I'll approach the other three in, in my turn. Okay, uh, Ryle. Ryle. Okay, I'm gonna yell for Mo or for the golem to shoot one of them, but the remaining ones. Okay. He rolled a 14. That'll hit. Is that hit? Yep. Okay, he does eight damage. Alrighty, we'll say he hits the one that was previously wounded. That will kill that one. Okay. Um, I'm blinded, so that means I get disadvantage, right? Correct. Okay, well I'm gonna flail. Um, wildly at one of the ones that I think are in front of me. And I rolled a 10. So I guess I missed. That's a miss, yes. Number is a 12. Um, alright. Verabrar. Okay. I will... Did, Verab huh? did Verabrar get around last time? I did. Yeah. Okay. I, I go before the ash creatures, though. Oh. Um, and I'm going to shoot at one of them now. Okay. And I crit. So okay. it, it, it's dead. It's yeah. If I count it up properly, because we're doing the max damage roll plus, right? Max damage plus, yes. So yeah, so it, it's, it's well, very actually, dead. But oh, actually, you weren't hidden with that roll. You but failed if to they're in range of one of my allies, I automatically get sneak attack. Right, okay. So they're dead. Yep, they did. Oh, uh, so I have one more. So there's just one remaining. You flip it around, kind of. Uh, and I rolled a 25 to hide back okay. after the attack. Good. You duck, you duck back behind a tree. Uh, let's see the method. Flipping around. See if it's smart enough to figure out what's going on. It's gonna go running back to daddy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ryle and Verabar, you can both get opportunity attacks to see if you can stop it from getting to the fire giant and waking it up. I have disadvantage, unfortunately, so I rolled a seven. Hold it. I did hit it. I think you said Verabar, but meant I might have. Calders. Oh, yeah, I meant Calders, yes. Because oh. he's because he's melee with it. Eight damage. Eight damage. All right. So you do whack it, uh, but you are unable to uh, stop it, and it will in fact get to the fire giant, and it will shake him. Does it take it? Let me see. How's the hypnotic pattern work? Does it shake it awake or resisting taking damage? Uh, I think it, you no, know, it can shake it from its stupor. I don't know how it's going to shake a giant from the stupor. It's not like, like like kamikaze into its face. <laughs> but. Yeah, the, uh, someone else uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor. Okay, so yes, it will take an action. Uh, it's not able to shake it away, uh, so he will attack, like uh, shoot some of the sparks out of his eyes, and uh, the giant will kind of cough itself awake, and he will look around angrily. Uh, and he will take his turn to stride forward with 30 feet. Uh, and he will tell you that first I was just having fun. Now I have a headache. He, you hear him say giant. Those of you who understand giant. I understand. 
All right. Uh, his turn is stepping forward and taking a bit of a defensive posture. Uh, Arafel. All right. Um, hmm. Let me just look at this real quick. All right. I'm going to cast uh, Crown of Madness. It is a wisdom saving throw, or it's charmed by me for the duration. DC um, 15. Crown of Madness is not... I want you to read that spell real quick, make sure that's what you want to do. I, it doesn't do what I thought it did either when I first used it. Um, it doesn't like give control of them in any way. It just means that their first attack has to be to attack someone in range of them, if there is someone in range of them. It says the charm target must use its action before moving on each of its turns to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that you mentally choose. Right. As long as there's a... Uh, it has to be within its reach. If you read the first line of the next page. So, it, like, the, just so you know, beyond this, like, if the method's probably going to ch charge up, it's not going to do any better. Oh, uh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. I completely understand now. So, if there's... It can act normally if there's nothing within its reach. Okay. Well, couldn't it, like, pick up a boulder and throw it? Or no? Are we going to, for now, nothing can do that? You know what I mean? What? No, I'm saying, like, couldn't it, like, pick up something and throw it? Or it has to be within something of its reach, is way, the way that I'm reading it. So I think you're... Yeah, it has to be within reach. All right. Um... I will hit it with fairy fire then. Um, DC 15 deck save. Okay. Towards the giant. Make. Yep. Uh, what color okay. did you light up in? Pink. Pink? Mm hmm. Oh, this is the worst fire ever. You hear him saying giant. Those mm -hmm. are giant. And then I'm going to use Bardic Inspiration on. Uh, I'll give it to Cal just again since I convinced him to mess with it. Last time. DC 8. Then I'm going to actually... I'm going to back up 30 more feet away from this thing. And I'm going to tug on the... Um, armor, I guess, of the uh, golem. He told you to follow me. Alright, Caldris. I'm going to... Rush up to the giant and swing at it twice. And I okay. suppose the, you have the advantage on the second one. The first one you won't because he took a defensive stance, so you have disadvantage from that, but you have the advantage of the very fire so it cancels out. Right. Uh, and then the second one, I may use the nine spite. Okay. All right. So 11 on the first one, 22 nope. on the second one. Yep. And then uh, I'm going to expend the first level spell slot to do two extra D8. Um, I guess I could have used Bardic Inspiration, but I'm a jackass. Eh, next time. I will do 23 damage to him, sir. Alright. Very good. Ryle. You're muted if you're talking, bud. Uh, how would I get rid of being blinded? Uh, you are now on blind. It's only lasted for a turn. Oh, cool. All right, then. Um, there's I'm there's shake... CR one quarter creatures. They're not going to affect you more than that. Okay, well, I'm going to shake the stuff out of my eyes. Uh, are all the whatever they are around me dead, or are they still there? Uh, no, they are gone. The uh, You have a fire giant about... Uh, Actually, he's probably within about 10 feet of you. And then the uh, the remaining method is about 20 feet beyond that. Okay. Um, the uh, the giant killed my golem. So I'm going to yep. charge the I'm going to charge the giant. Uh, grab my I'm swinging my mace at him. Or my uh, warhammer. And roll 13. Okay. 13 will not hit. All right. And I'm going to command the uh, 
the um, golem to fire at the um, the giant. Since he has advantage, he rolled a 19. But you took advantage for yourself, right? Because you have to the verifier. You still rolled a 13? Yeah. Okay. Rolled a 13 and a 12. Okay. So yeah, uh, golem hit. You're muted. I don't know what damage it did. Oh. Uh, all right. It did five damage. And uh, the golem is going to listen to Aerofield since um, I did tell him to follow Aerofield. And he's going to follow Aerofield. All right. Very good. Verbra, you are hidden. Okay. I will use my uh, attack to shoot at the giant. I rolled a 21. That'll hit. For 12 damage. 12 damage total? Yeah. All right. I do love how two people who can heal are both up in melee. It seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, we're the, the people who we need to heal, right? And then that was going to be a thing before this game started. And then I'm going to stealth. I rolled a 27, and I'm going to take my movement to like stealth towards the uh, whatever it's called. Giant? Little little floaty thing. Okay, and get up behind the giant. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I'm going to go like, around towards that. Okay, well, you can get up to about the giant. That's as far as you can get. Okay. Um, yeah, 30 feet. Above. I have, yeah, 35, uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Smoke my pet. He's going to get back in melee with you guys. You guys have killed all of his friends, uh, his brother, his his wife. Uh, so he's going to sit back and just kind of chatter. Does anybody speak uh, Ignan? No. Primordial? No? No. Okay. Uh, uh, fire giant. I believe he gets two attacks, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the first attack will be against Caldra, second one will be against Ryle. Uh, that will hit you, Caldrus. Uh Ryle, what's your AC? 19. That will miss you. Awesome. Uh, Caldrus, you are going to take a fuck ton of damage. That's the only amount of damage I ever take, sir. <laughs> Particularly from fire giants, apparently. I do want to remind you, I told you guys at the beginning of this campaign that running is sometimes a good idea. I was gonna attempt we to are. intimidate him or something, um, but I thought that based on my luck, I would have better luck uh, swinging wildly at him. Uh, Twenty damage, Calders. Holy crap! Uh, All right. Uh. So now we're to Aravel. All right. Uh, because he's toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I'm going to give Caldras Bardic Inspiration again. And I am... I don't really know what else to do. I'm going to cast Bane on the uh, giant. Okay. DC, on that? Yep, DC 15 Charisma. If there's anything else within, if any of the, I don't, I, are there any of the floaty guys left? No, right? Or there's one? There's one, there's one on the left. If it's within 30 feet of him, I'll cast it on the on that thing as well. Okay. Uh, it does not affect the method. It does, in fact, affect the giants. So it's a minus D4 attack and ability checks, or attacks and saves. Attacks and saves, yes. All right. Very good. Maybe you'll prevent the Paladin from taking another 20 damage. Hopefully. Which, by the crossed. way, it's a really shitty roll on 66. Um, 
plus oh six. no yeah, unless you guys let me know if you if you guys want to start flying away from here <laughs> um Elders, your turn how uh how's this guy looking I mean he's looking angry I mean like <laughs> is he in is he in for the long haul or are we making some headway and you guys have only you've seen one arrow puncture his you know hit him in the side uh, and you have each, you and the cleric have each hit him once. Uh, he's lit up with pink, pink fire. But, I mean, you saw those ones back at the city, and uh, they both, you know, you didn't, you hit a couple, one of them pretty hard, and you didn't take either of them down. Nice. Mm. All the cool stuff I have sucks against giants because large creature. Well, he's bigger than big. He's bigger than large. Well, yeah, larger, larger creatures get advantage on blank. Uh, I'm gonna swing at him and smite him again. Okay. You can smite on both your attacks if you want. Yeah. Any I... attack you hit the first one having the just regular not advantage last time, I I pumped the brakes on smiting on it. We don't have to say you smite until you hit. You don't have to announce it in advance. Hey, you. Did I have inspiration, sir? You have bardic inspiration. Yeah, yeah, that's I was asking a bard. Sorry. Yeah, and you do, do have it again. Oh yeah, you do have advantage. He is very fired, so I mean, you have advantage, well yes. Okay, so I'm going to hit him twice, and I'm going to hit him with smite. I'm already doing 16 damage. Let me roll you some smite. Well, that's right. I shouldn't have used it since he's fairy fired, but whatever. Uh, 16 plus 12, 28. Okay. All right. Uh, what was that you were saying about with it being uh, fairy fired? Just because we have advantage, I feel like I, it'd be more useful for me to use cutting words to take away from his attacks rather than pumping up everyone else's attacks with bardic inspiration. So, well, cutting words is a reaction. Bardic inspiration is a bonus action, right? Yeah, but they pull on the same. Yeah, it's same pool of of. I, I have four of them per. Actually, no, I have it per short rest, but yeah, so uh, let's just say the next time he he attacks the first one, um, <laughs> I'm going to be using cutting words. There's no reason I'm going to be doing it. If you, if you want to just tell us what the rules are, you know what I mean, or however you want to do that, because, or we could just say I'm using it. Does that I'll look up there real quick for you. So, Ryle, in the meantime, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys want Bless, or do you want me to Spirit Guardians? Spirit Guardians. When doubt Spirit Guardians. Okay. <laughs> uh, if we're staying to fight this, I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians. So, uh, Spirit Guardians, let's see, it's... Um, let me uh, change this to a spell card. Okay, so you can do it, uh, as far as cutting words goes, you can do it before the creature uh, deals damage. So I'll tell you if it hits or not, and you can choose whether or not you want to do it before I tell you the damage. Okay. Alright. Uh, it's going to do 16 at the start of um, the uh, the giant's turn. Okay. And my, I'm going to command my uh, golem to keep attacking until I tell until it dies, pretty much. Okay. So the so the golems rolled a nineteen yep. and did a grand total of three damage. And that's my turn. Uh, 
So it doesn't need the the giant get a save on uh, on his turn to avoid damage. Yeah, uh, he it's a DC fourteen wisdom save, and it okay. does half damage. Gotcha. All right. Remind me of that on his turn. Uh, how much damage did it do? Three. Sixteen. But the golem did three damage. Okay. Very good. It's starting to uh, starting to ooze a little bit of a uh, fiery blood. Uh, very bar. You're muted, Verbra. I am muted. Um, yeah, so I'm going to completely ignore that little floating thing now because it bores me. Um, but I do want to, like, instead of making longbow attacks against the giant, do, like, hit and run attacks with the rapier because creatures that make a melee attack can't make opportunity attacks against me. So I'm just okay. going to, like, dash. And run hit attacks. And I roll a 13. Okay, with advantage because of... Uh... Yeah, with advantage. Okay, that's not hit. Alright, so I'm going to keep on running and hide again. I okay. roll a 17. So even if, you, even if you miss the attack, it can't take opportunity attacks? Yeah, if I make a melee attack against a okay. creature. Alright, very good. Uh, so smoke method... Uh, is going to get some preservations come in, take them. Uh, all of his friends are dead. Uh, it's down a few hit points. It's just getting kind of chattering, uh, and kind of inching its way away. Like, it can't, it doesn't want to run away from the fire giant because it'll get in trouble if it survives, but it doesn't want to get anywhere near you guys. Um, fire giant, however, he really doesn't like you very much, Caldrus. You're beating the shit out of him. Um, that will be a hit on the first one. You use cutting words on that bard? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want me to roll the d8? Yep. Three. Okay. Uh, that will be enough, actually. What's your, I assume your AC is 18, right? Nine. Oh, even better. Yep, yeah, you're fine. Um, and second room attack. Will just hit. Do you want to use cutting words? I do. You only have one reaction. Yeah, and I don't have any left actually because I used I used three bardic inspiration, I believe. Right, I used it three times, Caldrus. Yes. Yeah. Shit. Right. Twenty-five damage, Caldrus. I have twenty-four hit points. <laughs> now you have minus one. Now you have zero. <laughs> hey. uh, Ryle. Okay. Um, so, anime okay, dead. First off, I, I, actually, I apologize. I lied. It was not Alex's calendar's turn. It's actually Arafel's turn. Um, so... There's no way. Would I be able to? I assume I'm like 50 feet away from them. Um, you're about, assuming. You're about, you're about, yeah, you actually said you backed up a bit. You're about 40 feet away. Yeah. Um, would I be able to get a hand on him with, and run away without uh, incurring an attack of opportunity, like on a later turn? If I, you know what I mean, from the from the giant. To grab him like, and pull him away. Or to grab him and heal him. I mean, you can definitely heal him as far as, like, but if you pull him away, you wouldn't get an attack of opportunity, but he could try and attack Caldus with an attack of opportunity if he chose to. I'm actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strum on my um, banjo, and I'm going to cast Levitate on Caldus's corpse, and he's going to rise up vertically, assuming he's not 500 pounds, and I'm allowed to do it on corpses, which would make sense, or unconscious characters. Uh, 20 feet up, and then I'm going to move him. Uh, I think I can move him 20 feet. Yep, 20 feet in either direction on your turn. Um, so he's going to move 20 feet towards me, and I'll make up the rest of the... Well, I'll start to make up the rest of the difference. Well, he's only 20 feet away, um, but I can't use an action. I'll stay where I am for now. I'll just cast Levitate on him. 
And I think that's my turn. Okay. So yeah, you're able to move him away. Um, we're going to figure that he is now technically an object. Uh, which direction you move him in? Uh, towards me. So 20 feet oh. towards me. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Caldrus, death safe, please. Eighteen. So close. Work. Yep, you're good. Uh, one success. Ryle. Okay. Uh, I told the uh, the anime dead or the uh, skeleton to attack. Anime dead says I command them with a bonus action to attack, but I told him to attack just to keep attacking. Would uh, <laughs> so I you, don't to use... to, you don't need your bonus action for that. You'll continue okay. attacking until there's no more targets. All right. I'm going to use a uh, bonus action to cast Healing Word on uh, Caldrus for okay. five dam or five health. I don't know why this rolled two. but And then I'm going to, again, uh, Electricity is going to flow through my weapon, and I'm going to attack. And what the heck? I don't... This is getting ridiculous. I rolled a 12. With advantage? With advantage. You know, if you and, didn't hit this thing, you might have killed it already. Well, they've been hitting it. I haven't hit it yet. So with Spirit Guardians. <laughs> and, my gall, and my Golem has hit it every single time for its, like, <laughs> crappy two... Okay, it did eight damage this time. And uh, so at the end, at the beginning of its turn, it'll take 15 damage and it has to make, well, it'll make a wisdom save to do 15 damage. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, Verabrar. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to stay with the, uh, the hit and run guerrilla tactics. And this time I will actually hit the thing for 15 damage. Okay. And then a 29 for stealth to hide again. All right. You managed to hide in the dark and scary woods. Um, this thing is starting to get very annoyed. Um, he's going to grumble at the smoke method that this isn't fun anymore. Uh, he's going to take his swings at Ryle. Okay. Natural one. Uh, that's a 17. Uh, he is then going to take the attack opportunity and he's going to start to try and retreat. So he's going to move 30 feet away from you. Take an attack of opportunity if you like. Alright, I use Booming Blade because I have Warcaster. So it'll do 7 damage and does he stop? Uh, he does not. Uh, what he do, does do, however, is to make it. I forgot to make it lose it for a second there. No, he failed that. What's the damage from the uh, Spirit Guardians? It was 15. Or half damage on a save. On a DC 14 failed. wisdom save. Yeah, he failed the save. So. Alright, so 7 damage. If he does not stop moving, he takes another 10 damage. Alright. And he has his speed halved because he's in Spirit Guardians. Okay. So he only get about 15 feet away from you. He's being beaten up by these cherubs. And he's waving his hands around his head trying to get rid of him. Um, yeah, my guy's a cleric of Gone, so they're probably going to be the symbol of Gone, which are just cogs flying everywhere. Just what? Cogs. Like, cogs, uh, you know, like a cog wheel. Gotcha. So he's being, having, being beaten in the face with, with, gear, with gear parts. Uh, and Arafel. All right. Um, <laughs> what are the rules for taking damage from falling? How, how far, up, far up do you have to be? Uh, more than 10 feet, you take damage. All right, never mind. Um, I'm just going to land him on the ground and dispel. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. 
I'm going to plant him and dispel, and then I'll move 30 feet closer. I'll start running towards the giant. I have to use my action, I think, to use levitate. So, and I just realized that fairy fire is no longer in effect. So no, when, the, when the spell when the spell ends, the target floats gently to the ground if it is still aloft. I would. I want to break my concentration from it. Like I, I can move him twenty feet, so I'm going to move him twenty feet to the ground. Otherwise, he's going to take damage for falling. Oh, no, I get what you're saying. I, sorry, I, I, it all came to me, Ken. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to end the spell, and then he'll just come to the ground, right? So I don't have to move him. Thank you. No problem. Now, I will rule that if you're using that, then you break concentration because somebody hits you, they're going to fall to the ground just catastrophically. But if you okay. just choose to break the deal, they'll drop them. And I do realize that I should have caught it before, but um, he's no longer pink because fairy fire apparently is also concentration. Well, that's the way that it's in roll 20 right now. But okay, that's so no more. Silly. No more fairy fire. Yep. Um, so now that I have my action back, I am. I'm going to cast fly on Verbra. So you have sixty feet flying speed. I don't. I think that helps, or does that not help? I mean, he definitely won't get away from me now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to cast fly on you. Cool. And I'm also going to move 30 feet towards the giant. Okay. Uh, Caldrus, you are, we'll say that you land on your feet because you're conscious. So you you were you were hit in the face really hard, and then all of a sudden you were in the air, and now you're on the ground again. You're very confused. Yeah, well. I apologize. Such I'm just going to move next to him, next to Kald uh, Caldrus, not 30 feet towards the giant. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt your turn. It's cool. Galdris is confused. <clears throat> but it's still a giant. Roughly how many feet from the giant am I? Uh, the giant was trying to get away, but he was slowed because of the uh, a bunch of shit. So he's only about 30. He's still about 30 feet away from me. I'm going to cast command and command him to halt. Okay. What's the save on that? Let me look, because this is the first time Galdrus has cast a spell. Uh, 13, 13 wisdom. Wisdom. That does not work. From 18. Well, I will step forward towards my weapon and shield, because it would have been where I got smushed. Okay. Uh, you're about ten feet from the. When you pick up, when you get to there, uh, it's an action to pick them up, but uh, yeah. you are ten. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm not aiming to pick them up this turn. I'm I'm just moving forward since the giant appears to be moving away. Right. Uh, so yeah, you are ten feet away from the giant now. In my. Um, okay. And uh, Ryle. Okay, um, Spirit Guardians again, so on his turn, he's going to take 13 damage if he fails his Wisdom save. Um, I'm going to use Booming, or I'm going to run to catch up with him, or I guess walk since he's only 50, he, since he's not that far away from me. Uh, it, did the method, or I guess it's a method, the, uh, the, the, me the method, the method, it was from the method function. Okay. I was gonna say if it was, I was gonna say if it was in his way, or he probably got caught in the Spirit Guardians. I'm gonna use Booming Blade, and I rolled a 15. Does that hit? Uh, 15 does not hit. Okay. Our, um, my Golem is going to continue attacking. He rolled a 15, so I guess it does not hit. And I'm gonna throw down a Spirit Weapon. And roll an eight, because apparently Varus lives on. <laughs> I didn't even say you're going to make a character that was all saved, so you didn't have to roll to a head. Well, I thought about it, but I like this character better. <laughs> uh, Verabrar, it is your turn. Okay, I will use my new flying speed to continue doing what I was doing. <laughs> 
And I will roll a to 20 to hit. That will hit. For 21 damage. Finally a decent damage roll. And that is one hit point more than his maximum. So you fly up out of the shadows, you stab him with the rapier right in the throat, and he keels over dead. Ral, give me a dexterity save. No. Stole my uh, <laughs> Technically, he stole Calvish's kill, because Calvish did most of the damage in that fight. Yeah, but I just missed three attacks. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, so I'm going to... Mm-hmm. Oops, sorry. I'm going to walk over to Caldras and heal him for five. Just put my hand on his shoulder and heal him for five. All right. I know that that's probably not going to matter, but I'm doing it. I will heal myself for 25. <laughs> okay. Show off. All right. So you guys have a dead fire giant smoldering on the ground. The last method fucked off somewhere. Okay, I'm going to use this opportunity to look around. Because where did this fire giant come from? Okay. Uh, he's looking around the area around like the campsite. Well, this area, I guess, if I could have, if I noticed where the method ran off to, um, was there just like a fire giant out of the middle of this field, or did he come from somewhere? Well, I mean, you're up, this, you're in the hills, like you're. On, the hills are to the south. You've got the actually you got more hills to the north. There's forests, you know, scrubby forest land around. Uh, so he was in the hills for some reason. You know, they're in the area. Um, you know, you didn't stop to ask him what he was doing out here. Kind of okay. hard. He didn't seem he didn't see that. keen to explain his methods. Didn't we smell fire? Uh, sure. Yes, that's why I didn't give you guys a. You guys, enough of you noticed the fire smell that I didn't give you give him a surprise round. The, uh, okay. Don't mess with it. Research well, his uh, corpse. Yeah, Absolutely. if he doesn't, if he doesn't do anything else, if I can't notice, I'm just going to hit it, hit him again. Uh, probably in the back of the head, because he killed my golem, and just to okay. make sure he's still down. Gotcha. Do a little bit of double tap. All right, that's not a problem. Um, and going through his sack, um, he does both his possessions. He has a big bag. Uh, the bag has in it twelve hundred copper, uh, three hundred silver, uh, four hundred gold. Uh, Verabrar, since you got the killing blow, please give me a D one hundred. Oh, and while God, they're doing a lot of pressure, <laughs> and while they're doing Sorry. this, I'm going to start stripping the armor from him. I rolled a seventy-five. Seventy-five. Um, there is a wooden mannequin, human size, in there. Like maybe he raided a dressmaker or something, and he just thought it was cute. Or maybe he's making a doll for someone. Very strange. Human size, big wooden doll, uh, mannequin. Very strange. Um. And then he's also got a rod. He's got a second rod. <laughs> uh, so it's a rod. And this is a, a giant sized rod, but it is a giant rod. Well, I mean, he is a giant. Yep. It's four what feet long. It? Uh, weighs, if you try and lift it, it's quite heavy. What is it made of? Uh, giant. Possibly steel, possibly adamantine. I uh, it's will. Got two prongs on one end. Uh, it's got a handle on the other. I'll start to cast identify on it because okay. my I'm not proficient in arcana unless I can just see if it's have it has any magical properties. Okay. Yes, it does in fact have magical properties. Um, it is a rod of the vanadad. V-O-N-I-N-D-O-D. Um, it has 10 charges. Uh, it regains 1D4 plus, 1D6 plus 4 charges every dawn. Uh, as an action, you can grab it by the handle and expend one charge to cast the locate object spell with it. Uh, when you try and detect objects made of adamantine, uh, it increases to more than 10 miles. The 10 miles round. 
I after I do it, I'm going to explain exactly what it does to Ryle, and I'm going to hand it to him since he is pretty much has a boner for Mel. Okay. okay. There's a problem so, with giving it to Ryle. The problem is that it's four feet long and 100 pounds. I could probably carry it. Not very well, you, but I could carry it. 19 strength. <laughs> Could we get it onto the cart? Well, what we could do is we could <clears throat> wait until the morning. Um, I can use levitate. Well, it's only 100 pounds. The four of us could probably get it up, but I could levitate it onto yeah, on the, the cart. It's just walking around with it would be kind of. If it's, a, if it's a rod and it only weighs 100 pounds, I think that a guy with 19 strength could definitely lift it because I could probably carry it around and uh, I could probably carry it in real life with some difficulty. Right. The problem is not so much as the hundred. Like if it's hundred pound, just like a regular rod, maybe it's also four foot long. So it's like the size oh. of a bench bar that weighs a hundred pounds. Yeah. So yeah, it's it. You could carry it, but we you wouldn't be able to adventure with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but if you fixed it to the cart, we could probably use it to locate things from the cart, which would be pretty cool. Our little locating cart. That would be pretty neat. All right. Um. While he was casting Identify, I'm going to have strip the giant of uh, the plate mail. Or, I guess, plate or whatever he's got on him. Uh, giant. I believe he actually does wear plate mail. Let me confirm that. Whatever, whatever meddling arm, armor he on, had on there. Yes, he is wearing plate mail. Ooh, plate mail. So you can get lots of good mail out there. Okay. I'm going to take that, toss it in the back of the cart. Would I be able to... Um, I'm going to go over there and you're, inspect... The, the giant is so big, you can get... If you're... you could Let's say we can get, like, the breastplate on the cart. You can't put every piece of it on there just because it would wave it. it would, the horse would be able to move the cart at that point. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to take what I can and put it on the back of the cart. And... Um, I'm going to go inspect where my golem died. Is he salvageable or is he just sure. shot? He shot? He has 13 hit points. If you want me to, let's see, let's roll out of curiosity here. Well, I guess is he mendable? Or is he squished? That's 19, uh, 20. Okay, he's probably not. 26. No, he, he got hit for more than three times his total hit points. Okay, he, he's gone. <laughs> Alright. Well, I'm going to check to see if he's salvageable. Find out he's not. And uh, um, I'm going to order uh, <laughs> my one golem to stop following Airfield around and to get back on the cart. Okay. What was the range? Was it? Did you say five miles? If it, it's adamantium. Uh, yeah, look at Sorry. Like ten. ten. The sad. The sad thing is, I, is I still have a little bit of adamantium, so it's just going to point to us. It's a spell, though, right? We can like instruct it to look for certain things, like adamantine that isn't ours, or like yes. weapons. Yes, it's, or... it's uh, ten miles. If you're looking for adamantine, locate object usually has a range of and it recharges at dawn. Uh, locate object uses a range of uh, one thousand feet. Okay, you, you might not want to tell Ryle about that because we would probably be following the divining rod um, wherever it leads for the next few weeks. <laughs> so, well, then you're going to have to roll a character who's not going to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he can join us on our trip. Galdris is going to ask, do you, do you think it used the rod to find us? Do you think it, it brought him because of the golems? 
Well, the golems aren't really made of adamantine. What I did was I took the adamantine and I changed it into metal to make the golems with. But I do have a little bit left. So maybe... So he knows, yeah. yeah. But he could also, if he's within a thousand feet, he could use it to locate certain objects that would only be on maybe travelers or something that he knows that we're carrying. Like that. Is there anything that he might know if he was in cahoots with the Yanzi bin? Um, do we, we still have that... Uh, the bag of dust, right? Well, wait. Where are you um, well, I was going to say, wait. Uh, the giants did attack um, Tribor, and when we uh, when they attacked Tribor, we found that giant piece of adamantine under. So maybe he was searching for something, just like the other ones were. Right, and, and that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. We, they obviously escaped, but but maybe there's multiple fire giants out there who are searching for either the adamantine under uh, Tribor or something else, and that's what brought him here to us. He, he set out to find Tribor, but the, the rod led him to us. He did say that he was just looking to have fun, but obviously he could be lying. Or We're, we're given the DM ideas. <laughs> Calder kind of shrugs and Not say, bad. "Yeah, but you know, once once the rod brought him here and he saw us and saw that we clearly didn't have what he was looking for, he could have just figured he would have fun along the way." Yeah, but could be. Who am I to make assumptions about the affairs of James? Mm -hmm. Um, Ken, does that? Does our, our rule from last session still hold if we wanted to change our characters around a little bit or totally, which I don't want to do, but I may want it a little bit. We get a one-time use of it, obviously, provided we run it by you. I, I will allow a one-time reset a character if it's something you wish to do. I'm just considering either taking a dip um, somewhere previously, you know, a previous level, or something, um, or switching to like uh, a different school of bard. But I probably won't. I just I'm on vacation, and I have I may have ideas to roll with. So look, I don't just because I make a one character a week in Orc Pub doesn't mean that I constantly barrage my DM with requests to make to use a different character. I just wait <laughs> till he kills that one, and then I use a new one. I've been trying, but people keep healing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like I might enjoy something a bit more if I played it a little differently. The bard, I, I want to stick with the bard, but I just feel like if I played it a, I don't, you know, a little differently, because I'm not going to roll another bard when I die, because I'm going to die. Well, lore bar doesn't kick in really till level six. That's when you get yeah. the, uh, the best feature. Yeah, well, I get to pick up a spell. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing that, but also dipping in something else, a few different ideas, and it may open up, you know, three different... I might have two spells from, you know, one class or two different spells from two different classes and also have access to some other spells Yeah, by dipping into um, a whole class for one level. And I also may be able be able to have better armor than I do if I dipped like cleric or something. Yeah, it's either that or it's either that or dip sorcerer or warlock or something. Mm -hmm. It also has charisma to grab you a cantrip or something. Yeah, I don't or, really have any um like good <clears throat> um, non AOE damage abilities right now. So, like, my best option really is to e either use it. Like, I was going to use Thunder um, thunder Wave on this guy, which 3d8, it's not bad, but, um, or 2d8 if I would use it at a higher level, whatever. But, like, it'd be nice to be able to use some or pick up a solo target um, damage spell here or there. Well, um, next level, you could take some, like, Conjure Animals or something. Yeah. 
Well, plus, I, I don't know. Like, I got to figure out how to get my AC higher because if I would have taken one of those hits, I would have been in serious trouble. So. Well, that's what we're here for. And that's what the golems are for. Yeah, I'm but at some point, yeah. it's, it's, it's a rock's going to get dropped on me and that's going to be it. <laughs> so, yeah. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to have the golems over there. I'm only picking skeletons for a range attack, but they're basically going to be guarding you. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Thank you. I may even just do something as simple as like instead of taking me you know, taking um, the uh, ability point increase, like switching a little bit and taking a uh, a feat and doing some heals with uh, with uh, medicine kits. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I may just change something pretty small about my character. But instead of just doing it and. <laughs> Not saying anything, I'd like to have the permission of a one time use, you know. You uh, are if, an idiot. If, if 10 o'clock nice. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, I think this is around the time we normally stop. Uh, okay. So, um, next week. But, before we go, so I don't forget, uh, while we're riding, I'm going to be doing something, uh, probably using some of the metal that from this, uh, um, this uh, giant set of plate mail to make a roof for our cart and some kind of mount for our new divining rod. Okay. Sounds good. And I'm also going to be making more golem bodies. All right. You're probably going to buy some more horses when you have a chance to pull the extra weight from this heavy ass cart with the hundred pound rod sitting on top Fine. of it. Um, and you got somebody did mark down the, uh, loot that you got, correct? Because I'm not tracking your loot for you. Yes, it's in the team treasure already. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we. I might just have to sit down and make us like an enormous like gold-plated cart or something. Gold-plated, but some kind of really fancy cart. That would be very conspicuous, but... <laughs> Pretty awesome, <laughs> but also awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I we have a we have a mast now with this giant uh, beacon thing. I'll just hang like a giant cogwheel on it and make it look like a uh, um, a cart for the cler for a cleric gond. <laughs> so at least we'll have a we'll be able to hide this giant metal rod some way, or we can always turn it into an Oregon Trail cart or a wagon. Now I gotta roll right. a dysentery chart. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, thank you for the game this week, gentlemen. I uh, will see you all next you. week, and we'll continue on to the end. All right. Time. See ya. Thank you. Um, other thing you could do if you're wanting to change some stuff, you could always swap to variant human or something and take a like a magic initiate feat or medium armor mastery or something. Yeah, I have my. Uh, I'm probably gonna stick with Asimar, but when I took my um, ability increase, I my um, charisma was actually at seventeen already, so I could. Um, I might take uh, a feed that gives me charisma, or I may just switch some, some stuff around. But that's not a bad idea. Okay, I was just suggesting some stuff. Yeah, no, I'll probably ask you for advice <laughs> anyway. Oh, I don't I know if I'll be able to help, but just, yeah, shoot right. some ideas up here. Night, guys. I'm gonna crash. So have a good See y'all. Later. <clears throat>